All right, all right, we're live. What is going on? What is up, my brothers? All right, 100 episodes. <laughs> I fucking did it, man. I did it. <laughs> this whole thing started December 2018. And um, before we get started here, uh, I'm just going to post the link. If you guys can do me a solid, if you're watching this on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, any other platform, just click this link and um, head over to YouTube. Helps me out with the algorithms. Also, on the YouTubes, hit the thumbs up button. Smash it, destroy it, whatever you got to do. Just hit it. Uh, helps me out a ton. 100 episodes, man. 100 episodes. Started out as like a bi-weekly thing with uh, Dr. Sean Smith. And uh, December, I think it was early December, first or second week of December in 2018. Cooked this thing up. <clears throat> sometimes we did it weekly, sometimes we did it bi-weekly. Came up with a ton of topics. I was looking at the playlist here on my analytics, and 34% um, of my views on the channel, total views, have come from the Before the Train Wreck playlist. Most popular episode is 58 and 59. Pretty closely watched with close to 120,000 views on each of those. Um yeah, it's been a fun journey. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, looking forward to doing 100 more. <laughs> Swear to God, man, I thought this was just going to be like a small, small test and see where it went. But you guys like it. You seem to uh, get some value out of it. You enjoy it. So let's keep doing it. Um, as far as we have for guests coming tonight, I dropped a link just in... Um, couple of group chats I'm in so we'll see who uh, pops in to say hello and uh, celebrate uh, with tonight it's an all Q&A show so I'll, I'll drop the link momentarily on um, what's up with the uh, questions and stuff I was actually just looking at my see this is my this is my starting device you know a lot of guys will ask about getting started on YouTube and how do I start and what do I need what kind of equipment that's it that's that's what I started with that's what I still use it's a GoPro Hero 3 plus I think they're at nine now or something is where they're at. I should probably upgrade this. I mean, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. I just have a little lab life uh, mic that I plug into that thing and I mount it to the uh, suction mount on the windshield and I just blather away in the car. And that's that, that's where this all began for me. And uh, it was the May 2-4 weekend, the Victoria Day weekend in 2014, I think it was. So we're coming up on seven years in May next month. So there you have it, gents. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Yeah, and if you don't know, um, my editor takes every one of these episodes and the ripped audio and uploads them to the podcast platform. So iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, pretty much all of them. You know, you can find them there. So if you're listening, do make sure that you, uh, you know, rate the podcast and leave a review if you've enjoyed it. Helps out a ton. Uh, we got Ruthless Viking saying, hell yeah, we enjoy it. Discovered you a month ago. I'm eating your content every night. No more TV and saying hello from Argentina. What is up from Argentina? I got a super chat here from Eastside Tony saying, do the work. Five bucks. Thank you, sir. Chris Moffitt. Mike, what's up? Smash that like. Got an old timer here. I'll call him an old timer, but he's been watching for a while. Tuscan Razorbacks, Historic Slime Stream. Salute. Saludi. Thanks, man. Um, I was actually thinking back on if there was a favorite episode, and I, I can't honestly say that there was just one. Um, I've enjoyed them all. I've enjoyed all the guests. I, I enjoyed the time that I spent with Sean on the uh, the series, and I enjoyed the time running at Solos after uh, Sean's time. It's 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 been fun. Let me grab this join link here for you guys. All right, copy to clipboard. So... Um, I, I normally do this for 90 minutes, but because it's the 100th episode, I uh, carved out the space after the show because I got to do the 90 minute. And then at 930, I switch over to my private community and we do uh, just private Q&A stuff. So um, I put that on pause for tonight. So I'll, I'll go longer, maybe two, two and a half hours. We'll see how it goes. So uh, join and ask a question live. Make sure you have good audio, good internet connection. Ideally, wired headphones or some kind of Bluetooth headphones where they have a mic in it. Uh, and there's a private chat. So when you click through 
to ask your question uh, or if you wanted to share like, you know, whatever your favorite episode was, that's cool too. Um, in the private chat, just let me know what you're coming on to uh, talk about and I'll make sure that um, we jive on it. Uh, <laughs> one of your best podcasts on YouTube. I get a ton of value from them. Thanks, Edward. Appreciate it. Uh, the angry single mom was definitely your favorite guest. Uh, I don't know that she was my favorite and she wasn't a single mom. She was a married woman. But she was upset, I think, because her mom was a single mom, and she doesn't like that I tell guys to uh, give preference to women without children in tow, even though she said herself at the end of it that she would prefer uh, her own son to pick a woman without children in tow over one with children in tow. But there you have it. It's... Uh, that's the uh, fun part of this. You get to you get to kind of dive into these conversations. I honestly wish that um, you know more more people, you know, men and women, would call in to try to you know challenge some of these theories or ideas. You know, the the one where the lady was all about well, why do you hate single moms? Like, no, I just tell guys to that women without kids in tow are a better choice. That's all. Um, I think it'd be interesting to have more of those conversations with uh, uh, people. Favorite episode? Yeah. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what your favorite episode was. There was an episode where I had a male stripper on, and he was talking about his experiences during that time um, and what he saw happen. And that was that was a pretty interesting one too, man. That was that was kind of fun. Um, had a guy on that whose, whose wife tried to poison him, had a number of talks about uh, divorce. Here, let me go to my um, playlist counter here. Just have a quick look here and organize it. Uh, Dustin says, first time here, been following for a year, did one call with you a while back, 23rd year alive, my largest mental point of growth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. 100%. All right, let's see what we got here. Before the train wreck, view full playlist. Let me sort by popularity. I'll tell you which one was my favorite. Uh, to, to, to most popular. Worst Web Flags was the number one, episode 58, 59, the follow-up to that. No more Mr. Nice Guy, Robert Glover. That was a fun talk. Uh, did one with Rolo, episode 21, talking about beta male risks. How men jeopardize relationships and get dumped. That was a good one, too. That was 68. Why smart men don't marry anymore, number 80. Uh, that's that's straight out of a chapter of my book. I kind of expanded on that. Uh, oh, the tattoo one was hilarious. That uh, Number 13 triggered a bunch of tatted up garden tools. They did a bunch of response videos to those. <laughs> Free advertising, man. You know, these... These haters, they want to try to hate on you. They talk about you and they send you their audience to come watch your stuff and subscribe. But these tatted up garden tools, man, that one that one triggered a bunch. Uh, red flags with some of my moms, number 14. Four signs you're a thirsty beta simp. A lot of these were um, some of the longer ones. Yeah, the lessons from a bachelorette party. That was, I believe, the one with the uh, male stripper. Close to the late 80s, 87. There it is. All right, let's see what we got here in the Super Chats, and we'll go to the uh, call-ins. Again, if you guys have a question, you want to just uh, chop it up, you know, say, hey, what's up? If there's a favorite episode, any question you want to ask, going to roll for a couple hours tonight. So uh, let's see what we got here for the Supers. Uh, Lee Maxfield, congrats on the 100. Just finished your book, Facts on Facts on Facts. If you have not read The Unplugged Alpha, gentlemen, I invite you to. It's on Amazon. Uh, Audible, I narrated myself. It's also available in Kindle and print. Um, it's a fun project. I may do a follow-up to it. I've, I've, I've thought about that a little bit more, and I may have a, a follow-up to that with a little deeper dive into the rabbit hole on certain con concepts and some that I haven't even uh, touched on yet. Uh, but if you have read or listened to the book, uh, kindly leave a review. Just lets other know that you got value out of reading it. Um, glad that helped you out, Lee. Uh, who else we got here? Connor Mack, founder channel three years ago, broke in no direction today. I have two corporate jobs and endless opportunities fresh out of college with a positive net worth. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. Appreciate the super. I think the poisoning episode was the most shocking. Yeah, that was the dude that was married whose wife tried to poison him during the divorce. Um, that guy went through hell and back. Um Got the most value out of breaking up with a covert narcissist. That was another good one. How men jeopardize relationships get dumped. And shout out to Grondike Soap. Best stuff I've ever used. So over my shoulder, channel sponsor, Grondike Soap. 
uh, you know, check it out. There's a there's always a link pinned in the top comment towards the end of the video. I'll just put up the banner real quick here in case you want to jot it down, but it's just coopersoap.com. You can grab that stuff. It's the channel sponsor. Uh, Scott's been a great supporter of the channel and the show for a long, long time. Uh, what else we got here? Connor Mack, find your channel. Got that one. Just make sure we're all caught up here before I take these calls. Hey, Renegade Wingman. What's up, brother? Uh, congrats on the milestone. Keep dropping those truth bombs. Uh, you can find him on um, YouTube as well, by the way. We did a uh, episode about a month back. That was a fun chat. Got Rolo in the chat tonight. Thanks, Rolo. Uh, do, do Godfather's here. Let's see what else we got. Stay curious. What's your favorite Pink Floyd album? Delicate Sound of Thunder. Delicate Sound of Thunder, I have a special connection to. Um, I, in my teens, worked at the stereo store um in the toronto area it's called stereo den and they had these 12 inch laser discs which just kind of went out of style they never really went anywhere and we had this wicked surround set up with subs and big pioneer tvs and we just go in there on saturday morning before we open the store throw in delicate sound of thunder and that was fucking awesome you can't get it on dvd it's not available i've been looking for years they haven't uh converted it hopefully they'll do it at some point i have a vhs somewhere obviously but you can buy it in a cd set um if you want to have a good night, um, Delicate Sound of Thunder, just, you know, whatever your favorite, you know, thing is to chill out to, pour it, roll it, drink it, whatever it is, and uh, get down with a little Pink Floyd, brothers. You'll have, a, you'll have a good night with that one. Benjamin Boshaw, have watched every episode since started. Uh, I could take up a whole show with Crazy Train Wrecks that happens simply being Mr. Nice Guy Beta. We all can, mate. It's uh, it's not unique to just one of us out there. You inspired me to start a YouTube channel, Coffee Medic, where I show my progress doing the work. What would be some advice? Not doing this for money. I just share my thoughts and my journey. Thanks for everything. Honestly, I think that's what I've gotten the most feedback on with this channel is I didn't really do it for money at all at the very beginning. I just did it because I liked entrepreneurs and cars and I wanted to interview them. and I was just talking about stuff that mattered to me, man, stuff that was important in my business and hiring people, dealing with uh, entrepreneurs' challenges. Then I was dealing with my own wounds in my life, which, of course, you know, brought me down to the red pill rabbit hole. And I read Rolo's uh, first book and, you know, everything is history from there. So just being authentic about what it is that you want to talk about, Seamus, is what I would uh, give you the best advice on. That's what that's what people want to hear, man. You know, they want to they want to hear from like. Hollywood and TV and cable and all that bullshit, that's all manufactured. That's all scripted. Um, when guys come to YouTube, they come to YouTube because they want to be in connection with somebody real. You know, they they look in the same lens that I look in or, you know, they look at the screen. I look at the lens, obviously. But we all kind of connect at this place and we get something out of this together. I, I get something out of this too. You know, I enjoy doing this. This is something that... Uh, I wouldn't do if I didn't enjoy, if I'm being honest. So hope that helps you, Seamus. Uh, Pedro, congrats on the 100th. Did the same value. Uh, did you get the same value from audiobooks as you do from paperback format? Thanks and all. Did I get the same value from audiobooks as you get from paperback? Um, from my perspective, creating it, I enjoyed doing the audiobook more than writing the writing the book itself. Um I think that's more because I like consuming books in audio format rather than uh, reading them. I just don't have a lot of time to read. So when I'm driving or if I'm working out or something like that, um, my preference is audiobook. So I'll be honest, it's audiobook all the way for me. Um, Conk, very generous super chat. Thanks, brother. Cheers to 100 and 100 more. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And Raymond, congrats. Here's 200 more. You've done incredible service. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate it. Uh, Glenn, welcome to the channel as a member. And Nathaniel, thank you for taking the time to help men out who are lost like myself. Uh, will you go on the Fresh and Fit podcast? Uh, not any time in the near future. Maybe open to it at a later date. We'll see. Um, let's see what we got here. Got Eastside Tony who piled in first. Guys, um, if you're in the waiting area, just let me know what it is that you want to talk about in the private chat. Just helps me organize what I'm what I'm kind of going through here. Uh, Eastside Tony, what is shaking, dude? Good afternoon. Happy Monday, man. Uh, I just wanted to get on the show, congratulate you for the 100th episode. 
I came about uh, your content via, uh, I think it was Cars, actually, but uh, the red pill side totally hit me, man. Uh, I want to link up with you later and uh, just talk about a bunch of ideas that I got going on. But uh, first of all, man, I really appreciate the work you're doing from then, dude. I have a bunch of positive energy. Do me a favor, bro. Bro, just get the mic closer to your mouth just so people can hear you a little bit better. Yes, I can sir. turn mine up, but it might be harder for others to hear. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm out here. I'm, I'm coaching baseball out here. So oh, okay, um, cool. Po po apologies. Um, I, I, I've been through the ringer. I had to pay over 100K, man, to, just to, to be able to have my fair share with my daughter. And um, I, I'm listening to your book. Actually, I just bought it today and I was listening to it. And uh, the reason I want to get my story out is to prevent males from committing suicide, man. And, uh, you know, when it, when you said that on your book, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, man. And uh, I just want to I'm doing OK. You know what I mean? And I just went through it and, and I'm back now. You know what I mean? I'm shining mm -hmm. now. And uh, I just want to get my positivity out there and let guys know, too, just like you let guys know that, you know, it's not over. You know what I mean? There's a fight to be fought and there's a good fight to be fought and you can come out on the other side positive, you know? Mm. Yeah, man. There's a lot of work that we got to do as guys uh, and there's a lot of BS lies that, that we have to unplug from. It's, it's, it's something that nobody prepares you for. They spend a lot of time in school showing you how to color within the lines and geography and, you know, how to do calculus and all that, but they don't prepare you for real life struggles that, like you said, you know, can put a noose around a guy's neck if they if they don't know how to deal with it. It's, you know, life is, um, nobody cares about dudes. <laughs> you know, if there's one thing that I've learned is that most people just don't care about men and they don't do much to protect them or preserve them. It's women that are protected and men aren't. We're just disposable and that's okay. Let's just accept that. But at least let's give guys the information they need so that they can navigate life better and not make a train wreck out of life. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a construction worker, so I see the trials and tribulations that men go through every day, and uh, they're they're living miserable. Some guys are living miserable lives, man. Yeah, you know I mean? and they just been through it, just like I went through it. But they didn't have the opportunity, or they didn't have the knowledge to come out on top of the situation. And, yeah, and I hope you know. I hope that my book helps helps guys like that because it's because it's an easy early entry point. I mean, you can buy the Kindle for seven bucks, right? It costs nothing. So far, it's a ten out of ten. You know what yeah. I mean? I wish I would have had this. Like I'm coming, I'm Mexican, right? So I come from my my father, my mother. Obviously, had a good relationship, but they, it's kind of a machismo background where the guy just says what happens and the woman follows. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had an inkling of what you guys are talking about, but it's not as struck. They don't have it as structured like you do. And um, you now, just much respect, man. And I, I really appreciate what you're doing for the world. You know, thank um, you. I, I have a young daughter. She's six years old, and I just feel like I need to say something about this what happened with me just like you said something in order to to first of all so she doesn't make the same mistakes that her mother made and for anybody else's boy out there that doesn't have to go what i went through you know and what you went through yeah there's there's women that have interest in this um it's different though like i find that women are more interested in hearing about these conversations and are more open to you know, these truths that we kind of reveal that we pull back the curtain, like guys will hear this shit at 20 and they'll be like, Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got this now, but it feels like women don't want to hear these sorts of conversations until they've passed the epiphany phase until they've passed the wall. And they're like, you know, they actually have to come to the grips of reality of, of life. You know, Check this out. I, I'm a, I'm a actually big Bitcoin guy. Right. And uh, yep. you were, uh, you had an interview with uh, John, John Finch, right? Uh, I'm not a big MMA fan, but yeah. it hit me a, like a ton of bricks when he was talking about how he stopped trading Bitcoin because of his wife nagging him. And yeah. I was like, dude, you guys have so much potential in the Bitcoin community because the, the joke is we're all going to have girlfriends mm -hmm. like in that community. And mm -hmm. it's like, bro, oh my God, I'm just, I'm seeing lambs getting fucking led to slaughter, you know? And I'm like, we're just wow. getting started, man. This whole, this whole cryptocurrency Bitcoin ride is just getting started. It's just getting yeah. heated up. There's I'm a actually lot class, of class of 2013 here. So like, I've seen it happen a few couple times already. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's always that story like John and it's like, fuck, he's an MMA fighter. What the fuck? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> all <laughs> dude, all guys are capable of making a train wreck out of their life. What it a, is what, what it trip, is. Man. What a trip, right? Like I felt like a sucker. But it's like, wow, that guy, I mean, like you said, he's the alpha dude. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Well, he said himself during the uh, cast that like most fighters are 
blue pilled alphas. I actually like, listen. I listen. They can beat the crap out of just about anybody, but they're plugged into society's lies. And construction workers are just like that too. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, See, um, I all to- all day long, man, from all walks of life. It's it's well, like I- it's like the dude that's a greeter at the Walmart or the guy that's on the Forbes list of of, of billionaires. They have the same problems. <laughs> One guy just has more money than the other. That's all. Hey man, I, I'm gonna get back to coaching. Uh, yeah, yeah. enjoy. Be here, man. I just want to say congratulations. Keep it going, man. And we we're gonna have to touch base later. Later, you know. You got it, man. Enjoy. Cheers, brother. See ya. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just remove you guys from the waiting area after we've chatted, just to make space for others. So I'm just gonna hit the kick from studio, so you can watch back over on the YouTube channel if you want. Um, let's see here. Lee says, "Thank you for doing the audio. It's what we wanted." Yeah, and again, I recorded it myself. It's it's guys, it's not perfect. I've listened to parts of the audio book, and there's a couple of bookmarks that I've made because I have to get my audio engineer to re-engineer those uh, points because it's like there's one or two lines that might be slightly duplicated, or there's one point where you're listening to it, you hear because I have to take a deep breath. You didn't edit that out, but <laughs> hey, man, that's what happens when you self-publish a book. So enjoy it for now. Um, you know, when the audio is updated, you're not going to have those benefits. Um, let me see what we got here in the chat. So I got a bunch of guys just chiming in. Uh, I read the book. Very helpful. Okay. So we got one guy here, Lewis, Lewis Vargas. He's got a question about uh, business, uh, after he read the book. So, Hey, it's the guy with the hair. How you doing, brother? You're muted. You're muted. You got to unmute yourself. Oh, amigo. Hola, what's up, man? Hey, Rich. Uh, first of all, congratulations for the 100 episode and all that. Thanks. Uh, that's the first thing. The second, um, I already read the book you advised me, Mode 1. Okay. And good. man, it's a game changer. I okay, thank good, you good. very much for advising me to read that. I actually will uh, clean a lot of stuff after reading that. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Now, there's another thing I, I want you to uh, ask ask about, uh, ask and, adv- and advise you too. So sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, English is not my first language, sorry. No problem. The thing is, um, look, um, by this period, I'm not actually interested in talking to ladies uh, as uh, uh, we talked the last time. Actually, yeah. um, I'm... I, wh- what I didn't have the chance to tell you is that it's not me who approached them. It's them who approached me. But I basically told them to fuck off. The thing okay. is, um, do you have any advice on other books on entrepreneurship? Because I'm starting a, a, an entrepreneurship. Yes, I, would, I, would, I would tell every guy that, that wants to lean into running their own business to study great men that have run their own business. So start with biographies. Biographies. With biographies like Richard Branson's Losing My Virginity. Uh, The Everything Store, which is the story about Jeff Bezos. Uh, Uh Shoe Dog, which is the story about Nike. Nike? Um, Those would be the big ones. Um, I think think my favorite out of the bunch is is probably the one on um, Amazon, The Everything Store, and Mm -hmm. Losing My Virginity. They're both long books, but they're worth the read. Mm. The Everything Store. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. A- a- anything else? Like, um, I have a few, f- a few friends, which so, are, uh, so if hmm? you go to the, uh, pin comment of any of my videos and about the fourth or fifth line down, I have my Amazon influencers link with the, with the books that I recommend. So click that Amazon link and it takes <laughs> you to a bookstore and I have all my favorite books in there. So there's stuff that's red pill stuff. There's entrepreneur stuff. And I have a few notes for each book telling you why you should read it. So just take a look at that link after you've read those biographies is what I'd recommend. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. All right, man. See ya. All right. Let's see where we're at here. Thank you for the audio. Okay. I got that one. Samuel Moore says, congratulations. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. And oh, we have one dislike, one single mom disliked this video. It, actually, it's it's probably not a single mom. It's probably one of these black pillars, one of these doomer guys. Uh, they always come, you know, show up, whatever. Uh, hey, Rich, I was wondering if you saw the video I sent earlier today 
And if you did have an opinion or if you could share your opinion, I'm not sure what video you mean, Glenn. Um, oh, let's pull in uh, my buddy, Paul. I'll add him to the stream. He's one of my, he's one of my bros. <laughs> What's up, bro? How you doing, man? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, I just we... need a little advice, man. I got this uh, <laughs> woman I just started dating. She's got three kids, but she's been pushing about 220 right pounds. You should, should marry, marry her. her? <laughs> How, should I get her to work out or should I accept her how she is? She's 220 pounds no, no. and five feet, feet tall. Feed her more ho-hos and, and donuts <laughs> and just, just blimp her right out because that way that she'll never sense. leave you, dude. Yeah. She'll never leave me. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> By the way, that's that's, that's what we call sarcasm. I know that there's a <laughs> you know there's a small percentage of of people that will come and view this stuff, and then they'll take a little sound bite out of it, then they'll twist it around, and then they'll put it on some Doomer jam. I'll be like, see, he said to marry the single mom. <laughs> <laughs> What's this kind of advice these guys are giving out? Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, you're a bunch of simps, man. Uh, simping. <laughs> hey, by the way, if you guys haven't uh, downloaded the stereo app, Paul and I connect every well, almost every Sunday now. But like Sunday mornings at, at 9 a.m., it's a cool little app. It's almost like we're on a phone call and we can take questions there too. Um, so if you're not following on social media, follow me on social media because I always announce the day before. Uh, about the show it's 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 a lot of fun and paul's a great guy delivers awesome value thanks brother appreciate it yeah we're having some really good talks and conversations it's a great sunday morning man like it's really yeah. really cool those guys it's not a ton of people on right now i mean there's a fair amount but i mean it's kind of close-knit and they're able to ask us questions and and get stuff answered and get you know hell yeah get it basically a section of our time and 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 get a little insight it's pretty bad bad a you know it's pretty awesome yeah, we can so, say badass. Why not, man? I can. Me, um, that's hundredth episode. And say whatever you want. <laughs> let me see what we got here in the uh, waiting area. Maybe, maybe if you can hang out for a bit, I can, uh, you can hang out for as long as you want. I'm I'm free now. <laughs> yeah, I get you to chime in on, on on some of these too. Let's see what we got here. Quality over quantity. Uh, Ozzy, what is Ozzy? What? Where are you here, man? Can you throw a uh, private chat in there? Just let me know what question you got. Um, Sam, did you congratulations since men and women cannot be friends? What do you think about men and women's relationship supposed to look like outside us? Okay, so I'll th I'll pull in Sam. I think he's been in before. So he says, uh, what do you think of men and women's relationships are supposed to look like outside of sex? What does that time in between look like? Is there whole relationship sexual in nature? How do you believe? Sorry, how do you balance learning skills? It seems once I focus a new one, I lose. Okay, so let's pull him in. Sam, what's shaking, dude? Any hey, clarification what he's talking about? Yeah. So, thanks, man. Thank you. So, clarification. You want to you want to talk about uh, women outside of when you're uh, grinding nasties in the bedroom on the workbench? Like, what are you supposed to be doing outside of that? I'm more just kind of wondering what then are the interactions like? Even if you're in an LTR, like this time you spend with the on a woman, what does that look like? It depends okay. on the relationship. So are we talking about LTR? Are we talking about a plate? Are we talking about friends with benefits? Like, what are we talking about here? It Wife? Could, it could be either or. I mean, like, I guess if you have a friends with benefits, then it's just strictly, uh, hey, we meet up and we we have sex. Like, that's, yeah, like, that's if, strictly all it is. You have Like, fun. if it's an FWB, you're not taking vacations together. She's right. not meeting your family. You know, she's not showing up at Christmas or Thanksgiving or anything like that. It's just smash. That's it, right? Exactly. Like are you talking about a girlfriend here now or not necessarily. This is really just a whole in general kind of uh, like you, you could even apply this to someone who you're not having a sexual relationship with. So you're like just wondering how to interact with women that you're not in a sexual relationship, basically. Like how do you, where do you place them in your life or is that what you're asking? I'm just simply wondering, like how would do you usually interact with uh, women? I don't. If, if I'm not banging, why would I be? I mean, we're either it's, setting it's, up it's a bang not, it's or not even a question about whether or not you're banging. It's like let's say you're you are banging a girl, and let's say she's a plate. She's not necessarily friends with benefits, but you're just seeing her. Okay, so like so, so she's in rotation then, right? I mean, like yeah. you know, you're going to see her on whatever you see her, and you got another girl later on in the week because you're a man of purpose and you're chasing excellence and you have things to do with your day. You're not going on vacation with her. You're not spending a lot of time with her. It, it's like you're getting to check her out it's like a longer version of the sniff test did you read my book yes i did phenomenal so, stuff you know how in the book like i'm talking about the first date is really just a sniff test you know for an hour yeah this is kind of like the longer version of the sniff test this is where you know where sean talks about in his book the tactical guide to women he's talking about basically you know like you got to vet her over a year year and a half to see what she's really made of you know apply some stress to it 
that's really what you're doing, right? Because you're because your spinner is a plate. There's one or two other women in rotation. Maybe you're intimate with them. Maybe you're not. You you know you can do whatever you want, but you're basically seeing what she's made out of, right? So, you know, instead of just doing the one hour date like you did the first time, maybe you're doing a little bit longer. It's like an evening. Maybe there's a sleepover. Maybe you stay over at her place a little bit, but nothing you know that's that's like beyond days, right? Like you're not spending an entire weekend together or anything like that. Like she, she comes over Friday after work and she leaves Monday morning, right? Like that's a girlfriend basically when you're starting to do that. Sam, how old are you, man? If you don't mind me asking. 21. All right. Yeah, dude. So right now you're at the, about near the lowest value you'll ever be in your entire life. You know, you know that right (laughs) from what Rich talks about. So you're just going to increase value over time. A lot of this is because you don't see your own value right now and what you need to be doing to gain that value. So you're, you're focused and worried about what kind of time you should be sent, spending with women outside of the bedroom. And I get it. You know, you're figuring your way out, out through this stuff. So it's not a big criticism, but like, understand you can have good interactions with women in social circles and stuff like that. Like if I go out on a Friday night, you know, I have women around me. In fact, my Friday night was me and three chicks. That was my Friday night. I had a great time. You know, there's time that I spend with guys, you know what I mean? That are my guy time friends time. There's times that I might have a party or host something. Women show up, guys, girlfriends, guys, wives, people I work with, my, my assistant I just hired as a female. You know what I mean? Like, but the thing is, I, that's in social time, social circles. I'm sure when Rich goes to his boat club this summer, he's not going to look at women that are there and be like, I don't talk to you unless I'm trying to bang it. You know, of course, no, he's not. Right? <laughs> he's gonna, you know what I mean? He's gonna be like a normal person. Right, just and be social. Have social interaction, exactly. But see, Rich is busy guy and he's on his purpose. So is he gonna text these girls for hours? I'm not gonna you know, sit afterwards? her down and, you know? <laughs> and and be like, hey, you know, I'd like to get to know you. Why don't we have a coffee, sort of thing? You know, unless there's sex involved or right. wanting that to be. Unless you're gonna lead up to yeah. something like that. I sh- I should clarify. I'm not looking to be friends with girls at all. That's not. Okay. I've realized. First and foremost, yeah. from my education, from first, like, it's, first, first, it's plate status, and then if you want to expand that, then you might want an LTR. It could be monogamous, could be non-monogamous, but you don't promote her to an LTR until she proves that 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 she's worthy of that, right? Meaning she's going to be a complement to your life, not the focus. Yeah, and that's way yeah. down the road for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, it's just if you're worried about like, oh man, what rules do I follow so I don't spend too much time with this chick and let it get too deep or any of that stuff? I think you're kind of focused on the wrong thing. You're focused on your purpose, getting to the gym, making money, figuring you know, figuring that stuff out. Then you see you're you're barely gonna have time to see this chick. You're gonna see her when you can see her, and sex is gonna be involved, and the problem just takes care of itself. You know what I mean? She doesn't become this fixture in your life that's there every single day. Or whatever, you know, you don't have to worry about setting those rules because those rules will set themselves as you as you focus on your on what you need to do. If that makes sense. Which actually ties into my second question, which was about learning skills, finding the balance of not losing one that you learn when you start focusing on a new one. For instance, uh, when I first got into like I found Rich Cooper's uh, channel like uh, about two years ago. That pretty much was my whole introduction to everything Red Pill, Rollo Tomasi, everyone on Rule Zero, and my life could not be better for it. So uh, basically, after all that, it was just how to get the girls, basically, um, and developing that skill. And I've gone, you know, for my age, decent at it. Uh, but then I'm like, okay, what's really missing is money. That's what I should really be focusing on. And that's, uh, and, you know, focusing on purpose, as we say, you know, chase excellence, not women. But what I've noticed is once I start focusing on that a little bit, I lose the skill in just socializing with women. See, but once you've become a man of purpose and have chase excellence and have the results along with it, money changes a lot of things for you. It, it creates a lot of options. Um, you don't, there's a lot of these guys that like manufacture this like thing called game, <laughs> you know, where they make you memorize lines <laughs> and a lot of it's fake bullshit. You know, oh, yeah. faking um, fields and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it's really about setting boundaries and enforcing them with women. You know, when it comes to longer term, you know, interactions when you've when you've put your little dent in the universe and that you know that continues to grow. The point then is not to screw it up and lose it and give half of it to her. You know, there's and that's where game you know comes into play. But it's not game like oh, let me memorize this line and 
do like a redirect and do this and that thing. And the other, it's like, no, it's, it's do fucking what it is that you're on. And if there's some beautiful women around you and you want to invite one or two or three of them, you know, into the, into the mix, different times, same time, whatever the hell it is that you're doing, you can do it. But understanding female psychology and nature is what we talk about. It's, is what you hear the rule zero guys talk about. It's what we, it's, it's basically the underlying theme of what gets you the results out of life. These guys that are, that are, that are like banging on about, you know, notch counts and stuff like this. Like, <laughs> look, I would, I would rather sit with my buddy Holt that's climbed seven mountains on seven different continents and have conversations with him than some guy that's like fucking, you know, hanging on to a notch count number, right? You see what I'm saying? Like, take, take a little bit of the focus away from women, move it more towards female psychology, and more importantly, reallocate a lot of that energy towards chasing excellence and putting your dent in the universe. All of that shit with chicks, you know, becomes really easy once you get to that point. Yeah. Uh, plus, so losing these skills, it's like, man, it's just your social interactions. So the essence of kind of what makes my game or pickup, if we want to call it for lack of a better term, different is it relies on a strong internal framework right? So you walk in and you have a strong alpha framework to begin with. So that's all the chasing excellence stuff Rich is talking about. That's why it goes really well with that. You know, doing combat sports too, being a badass or a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just a little I'm bit. I'm looking at getting so, back into Krav Maga. I used to do that go. back in high school. My friend and I, he's doing it over the summer. I'm like, we'll do it when we get back to school. All that good yep. stuff. So and frame, I, mm -hmm. frame is the biggest thing that I need to at least develop. It's my biggest lacking thing. And reason being is just through young life, I didn't spend a lot of time with men and didn't have a lot of men or role right. models that were good enough for that. Yeah, you, you didn't get to witness how to communicate with women the way that these men just in communicate general. with women. Or yeah. in general, right. Which Managing frame becomes a lot easier when you become a man worthy of managing said frame. Yeah. It's only done better with the uh, shout out to Rolo, you know, mental point of origin idea. Yep. That's the only right. it's, Slightly better, but I mean, yeah. The, there, there's the mental part, which is the most important starting part. Part It's like you act as if sort of thing. But there should be a transition to becoming the game, like to actually being that mental point of origin. You see what I'm saying? Then I would still need a transition into that. And that will happen over Well, you're time. 21, dude. Like, you know, fine, cool, yeah. awesome. Just, you know, keep, keep working you know towards your purpose putting that dent in the universe chasing excellence make that important i'm not saying don't date women don't don't definitely don't get into a long-term monogamous relationship in your 20s right i've read your Unless book, she's a single mom, book definitely rollo's do. books yeah I, and and I got really the really big then you should be like paul and then marry her right marry her single mother yeah <laughs> For 45 sure. years old make sure she's yes. got at least two kids in tow you know at yeah. least a three, couple different dads three is even so better yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect. From two that'd different fathers, or all three of them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's your, uh, what's your, what are you working towards? What's your vocation? Uh, funny enough, uh, long-term uh, fictional author, but I have ideas for. Uh, I want to start a business when I start building capital for something in fashion, and uh, I have considered, and I think because of my friend, he. Basically, I uh, I don't claim to be a red pill evangelist or anything like that, but I kind of introduced him to some some of this stuff, and he's like, "Dude, this is so awesome!" You're and he kind of inspired me to actually want to start another channel, which I'm researching that as well. And that's just for fun, like how you were explaining earlier. Uh, I've been looking at that for a while. Um, so going into that, I'm currently I just got on an onboarding process for uh, I've a background in the past two years of phone sales and high ticket sales. Now, in the past year, I've gone a little bit into copywriting, so I want to focus on those two skills specifically mm -hmm. to uh, start something. So, All right. So your practice on female game is just like sales skills, man. It really right. is. It you really climb is. into, you, you get rid of yourself, take yourself out of the equation because you're just a badass, all right? You already know it. And then you climb into her brain and you figure out what are her thoughts, feelings, emotions, perspectives, trigger points, and you communicate to that part of her brain to move things along to where you want it to go. It's just like sales. And of course, if the product is not for her or if she's not qualified for the product, you don't try to sell it to her, right? Move to the next one. 
it's the same thing. And, and when you interact with the women on a regular basis, you just interact with them. You're not trying to necessarily sleep with all these women. Like you go to a party or something that someone's throwing, you're just talking to women. That's a chance for you to work on these communication skills with no pressure of closing or trying to make those things happen. And that way those skills develop, you know, and that way you're not losing. When someone tells me I'm losing my skills, that tells me you're focused on a goal, like getting a girl's number, sleep with her or whatever. And, and then you're, you're falling on your face, right? Instead of just worried about this communication connection and working on those, what we could call sales skills, right? With these women. And that'll help you throughout as you sell things and build businesses and do whatever to communicate with women, you know, in the marketplace of whatever you're trying to sell is pretty important. You know what I'm saying? So they, the two go hand in hand actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest thing sales gave to me was uh, being able to handle rejection. Mm, yeah, I could, oh, dude, I could do that all in high school. And young men don't have today. Yeah, 100%. it's probably they the get, best. They thing get that rejected happened. a few times, and they're just like done. Yeah. yeah. So right. I'm glad that you got that. Good, good. All well, right, man. I'm gonna so make some room guys. for a few yeah. others. Thank you. Yeah. See ya. All right, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna move you from the studio just to make room for a few others to come on in. Um, yeah. I'm gonna give priority to guys with uh, camera and audio because I've only got 10, I think there's only 10 waiting slots on StreamYard. So uh, just, you know, forgive me dudes, I'm gonna have to make some space. Uh, kick, uh, kick. All right, that'll free up some space here. Got the big Lebowski in the background area waiting. Let me get these super chats here. Donnie says, congrats on 100th. I'm on my fourth listen. Through your audiobook and positive changes are think are sinking in. Appreciate that, man. Good, good man. Um, good. I always enjoy over to book, Amazon dude. and leave a review too. That's uh, that's one of the best things you could do for me too. Thanks. Amanda says uh, this kid needs to get his T levels up. Amanda, Ouch. you're harsh. Amanda, <laughs> don't be mean. Don't make you just made like half of the chat cry. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Okay, Ozzy just wanted to say thanks, so I'm going to pull him in real quick. He, he left a private chat. What's up, man? What up? Hey, Rich, what's up? So How you doing, just, man? Just wanted to thank you personally. So I got into the contents around August of last year, and like looking back, just Simposaurus Rex all the way. Mm -hmm. it, it was your um, it was your uh, um, collaboration with Aaron Clary that actually got me to your channel, and I just watched all of your before the train wrecks, like from one all the way up to whatever it is right. Oh, there. really? Like a binge watch, like a Netflix binge oh, yeah. watch. I would. Uh, Which I would one was your favorite, on. by the way? It's the one where Robert Glover talked to Rolo. Believe it or not, I actually like that one a lot. I don't think Robert was on that one. That was uh, that was Sean, Sean and Rolo. Sean, oh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that was a really good episode too. Yeah, and I have to say that honestly, I'm glad I found you guys instead of like the other choices because honestly, I was going down the Blackville uh, route. Like, I was 60 pounds heavier. I had like longer hair. I was just much more, much more. I was just straight up depressed. And really, yeah. it it wasn't easy. It wasn't like, oh yeah, I, I saw the red pill, and all of a sudden it's it's working, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. I'm happy. Like, I'm still not happy, but you slowly pull yourself up and you slowly get some shit done. And I want the rest of the men to kind of feel that it's worth it. You will eventually get better slowly but surely. So it was about a year ago, you said? Uh, August, so 10 months or so. Yeah. So you dropped 60 pounds. What else changed for you? Uh, I moved out. So this might not look much, but this is the Bay Area, so it's very expensive. But yeah, I moved out on my own, and like I'm banging like 23-year-olds right now. Before, I was with a woman who was older than me, much more heavier than me, and just I kind of was, I kind of was a loser, honestly. Mm. So I'm making uh, – I was, I was already good at work. Uh, like I'm a – high earner let's just say but yeah like i was spending on stupid shit i was just buying toys and things and subscriptions now i'm a lot more kind of focused and i want to eventually get to the point where like i'm able to do like your private communities and more things like more business oriented but right now i'm just kind of grinding in the in the tech field good man good for you well appreciate the feedback mm -hmm. and uh you know continue to enjoy the uh the episodes brother mm -hmm. keep doing what you do guys thanks man all right gonna just remove you just to make some space for the others to come in and uh again guys i'm 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 gonna give priority to the dudes with the camera on uh it just it just helps me sort through this a little bit quicker so i'm gonna make some space uh so if you want to have a conversation flip on your camera in the background area just so i know who's uh, who's who with the private chat um why not today says 20 year old guy here took a gap year and haven't started college is college worth it or not if you're going to college for lot. stem Science, technology, engineering, maths, where you need a degree and you're going to make some serious bank, 
Yes, that's when you need college. Otherwise, I'll tell you right now, it's more than likely a waste of your time. Uh, sc like school will get in the way of your education if you're taking it for conventional like bull crap stuff. Um, you want to chime in on that too, Paul? Yeah, that's that's about it. You've answered this a lot actually on your channel, so you know you want to go back and watch some Rich's older videos and, and check them out because. Um, you know, college is not what is required to start a business and make money and do what you want, do what your passion is. Now, sometimes it is if it's a STEM or a, a field that you can't get outside of college. Like if you want to be a writer, right, for example, just write and get good at writing and start mm -hmm. working with people that are writers. And you get what I'm saying? You know, start doing the work there and start doing other things to make money. If you want to be, you know, some of these soft skills college isn't really going to develop those as much you're going to go through a lot of bs whereas maybe you want to be an accountant that's a little different you know you want to be an attorney you got to go to law school right those are those things are different stem right research those things you re require college so if your vocation isn't something that is going to require college if it's a skill you could get somewhere else go get it somewhere else and go work on making money doing that you'll do much better mm -hmm. um what do we got here? 20 year old guy, Duca. Mm. I'm from Brazil, but I have a company that I make a lot of money at in dollars, 15,000 a month, but I work at home. That's something hard. Few relationships with people here. Just started jujitsu with your advice. Any more advice is if you make 15 grand a month, get the hell out of your parents' house if that's where you live. Uh, you said that you work at home. I don't know if you mean like you work from home or you work from your parents' house, um, but if you're living with your folks, get the hell out of there. Definitely time to. Get your own place then. Um, Definitely. Off it. What else we so, got here? The goddamn bacon. Just dropping to say hi. <laughs> 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 Thanks, right. man. Hey, I'm gonna throw down a little endorsement for you while I'm on here, man. Like, good. I I had eight uh, clients today. I went through plus a show today. That's eight people who have you to thank for all the work we did in session over at, you know, apex mindset on the individual consultations. So you guys don't know, I got into Rich's entrepreneurs community. I was, I had a real estate team that was, I'd say fairly successful. I wouldn't say it was as successful as your debt business, for example, but for real estate, we were in the top, uh, what was it? 5% actually for Michigan in terms of our numbers. So we were doing okay. I got in for entrepreneurship, but I had, I was a sales trainer for, you know, and did that for our branch in Berkshire Hathaway and all over the, all over Michigan. And, um, I had, uh, a lot going on with the military and I'd been studying psychology and performance psychology for a long time, as well as sexual dynamics. I'm impacting more people today on a daily basis and helping them with their problems, both with performance and mental fitness, as well as relationships, income wise and business wise. I'm, I'm in that top 10% again. I'm actually closing that gap probably next year or two. And the things are going amazing, dude. And I got you to thank for that. And so do those other people, you know, you're really influencing a lot of guys and I'm somebody who's coming up and building and I, and I have you to thank for it, man. And your, your, your friendship and your mentorship in the space has been incredible. So, um, take that to the bank MFers and go buy a rich's book and start doing some of the things that he's telling you to do. And when you get the money put together, join the entrepreneur community, do some things, man, and better your life. It, um, I'm a, I'm a test walking, living testimonial and a lot of people enjoy my stuff. So I know that is a good thing, right? That's it right there, yeah. guys. That's the link. Um, there's, there's three tiers, but I only have two open right now. I'm not even going to open a third one because I'm very happy with the way that I'm running it. But the first tier is uh, the 1% where guys, there's, there's 500 guys plus in that group. And it's, it's, um, it's the basic level. It's basically the entry point. And then the entrepreneurs tier, the one that Paul's talking about can also be found at that link as well. Um, that's a little more expensive, but as he just uh, indicated the, uh, you know, the values there, if you want to, if you want to build your business and you have something going already, like it's not for people that don't have a business, you have to have something kind of happening. Um, and you want to level up. We do, uh, you know, we do a lot of work in that group and, uh, you know, tip my hat to Paul because um, he's done the work. He, you know, he's, he's he's put in the time. He's put up the content. He's helped a lot of people. Um, he hasn't taken all my advice yet, but he's but he's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was getting there slowly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's see what we got here in the private chat here. All right. Uh, here, I'm going to pull in Chris, actually, because um, he was talking about the stereo show that we did uh, the other day. Oh. And he's also one of our, yeah, yeah. One of our brothers. What's up, What's up, Chris? Good evening. You hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. You're loud and clear. All right. Sometimes this mic is finicky. Yeah, man. Well, first, I'll do my own um, endorsement. So, I mean, I think, Rich, the first video I saw from yours was actually while I was still in the live-in LTR, probably back in the fall. And it was, I think, at that point, your most popular video, which was... Uh, three women not to date. It was the one about daddy issues. And I think, I don't know if I'd been searching for daddy issues and I saw that and I was like, holy shit. Um, and even one of the BTTs, Paul, you were on, I think the one about covert narcissism, that one I've listened to probably like four times in a row, just like checking off the boxes. So, um, but guys, for you guys listening out there, I mean, I'm in the 1% community, you know, if you can do it, do it, you know, it's not for thin skinned guys. Like we're there, I'm in it and people will tell you what's up. Like we're all there to make each other better. Uh, I mean, Rich, I think even since my conversation when I was here a couple months ago with you and Aaron Clary, um, you know, I have moved into a new place. I got a new job that now I'm making a six finger income, feeling much better. The crippling one itis is gone. I'm spinning multiple plates at this point. So I'm, I'm having more fun now and more success in my career with women than I've ever had. And mm-hmm. you're certainly a, a, a you know big part of that. So, um, yeah, so I chatted with you guys a little bit on stereo, I guess it was yesterday. And I thought this might be good, especially, um, Paul, from like the pragmatic standpoint about actionable items and actually how to have this conversation. So just as a, as a refresher, spinning a couple plates right now, and I'm, I'm getting to that two to three month period where it's either starting to happen or I understand it's getting ready to happen where the conversation is around the what are we? You know, where is this going? Are you with other women? You know, what do I, can I, am, are we locking this down? And so my ideal scenario is that I would have a handful or a a mini harem of women that I'm sleeping with, spending time with and keeping in rotation, but they're going to be sexually exclusive to me and I don't want to share them with other men. So, um, you know, I I know the the first step is like, let's draw that boundary and just say, Hey, if you don't like it, there's the door. But as far as maybe navigating those waters a little bit and having that conversation in real time, just, I think some of the guys out there that may be um, interested in in facing a similar situation could, could benefit uh, on hearing your advice. How many of them are asking you t- for exclusivity? By the way, like all three. Right of now, them, it's or? none. Right now, okay. it's none. But I'm getting. To, I'm. I'm hearing from them more often. It's not mm-hmm. just one of these things. Usually, it's like, hey, I'll, let's hang out next Wednesday. Cool, I'll see you then. And now, like more frequently, the texts are incoming, and I'm keeping them at arm's length. Still, a couple texts here and there. Hey, I got to run. I got meetings, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Or mm-hmm. still not doing a ton of chit chat, but I can kind of see that um, with the amount of contacting me and how often and how and the things that it's about and how often they want to see me that we're, we're starting to go down that path a little bit i'll i'll um you know hand this over to paul in a minute but i'll say this like i think that um you shouldn't even be entertaining a conversation about where do we stand unless it's been at least three to six months and it's going to be like you know three to six months of good behavior and even then if you're not interested in a you know in a monogamous ltr then just, just tell them like hey you know I don't think monogamy is good for me. It doesn't work. Um, I dig your vibe. I'm completely good with, you know, continuing to roll this way, but just understand that um, I'm going to be seeing other women from time to time. I'm not going to put your health at risk, meaning I'm not going to be like raw dogging them all, you know, sort of thing. Um, I'm not going to embarrass you, but uh, that's how I roll. So if you're cool with that, then we can keep doing that. And then if she's good with that, then the next thing that you're going to drop is, and I expect you to be sexually monogamous with me. And if those things don't work, there's a door over there and you can walk out of it. Paul? Chris is thinking, dude, I can't imagine having this conversation. (laughs) (laughs) I can tell. Look at his face. It's all right, though. Listen, um, well, first of all, too, kind of think about how you'd want to design your life around uh, having different women. So at the Rule Zero Conference, I did a um, presentation on harems right? And how to actually run a harem where not only your girl is consensual uh, to using other women, but she invites it, wants it, and wants to be a part of it. So, I mean, depending on what you want, that's an option. These really, you have to decide though, how you want to design your life with women. And we didn't get into this much in stereo, but it's good to get into here. If you want monogamy and that's your values, that's what you want. Cool. If you would be open to that or you want to just keep spinning plates 
forever or for a long time, that's fine. Whatever it is you want, you decide what it, that is first. I think the biggest problem is, you know, I thought about your question and stuff after we had talked yesterday. I think the biggest thing that I forget to tell guys is you have to set your frame to begin with, which means knowing what you want it to look like, knowing what you want your goals to look like. If you don't know what it looks like or should look like, and if that's possible or how, then how do you present that right to the other person? It ends up becoming then a negotiation and because you don't want to lose these chicks, right? Or you don't want to lose sexual access. And that's not what you want it to turn into. So if you have a vision, you know what it looks like. That's that's the first thing. Now, wh why don't we answer that question first and I'll point you in the right direction at a practical level. So what are you just going to do? You ever, do you want a relationship eventually? Do you want to keep it plates forever? Do you want to do plates now for a long time and then maybe later? Or like, what, what, do you, what, what would it look like for you? Yeah, Paul. So Rich knows a little bit more background on my situation. So I'm four or five months removed from a two and a half year long LTR, live in the dog, that whole thing, the dream of the white picket fence. How old are you? Um, and so I'm 29. And so, okay. you know, I'm thinking at least a couple of years before even really entertaining the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm getting into now I'm really starting to hit my stride when it comes to my career. I'm doing some traveling. Uh, you know, I've made complete lifestyle changes where I was a couple of months ago. So um, that's a really good question that I hadn't thought about a lot. I mean, I think maybe I say it tongue in cheek. It's like, well, I'd rather just have, you know, three girlfriends and then they all they'll be cool with it. But understanding how much time and resources that if I'm going to treat them all the same and equally, like that's, it's not just, you know, a cakewalk, right? So um, I don't know if that means letting the cream rise to the top and then bringing other women in periodically, or if that's, I have, you know, the multiple committed sort of multiple committed women to me and vice versa. So, so yeah, I mean, that's something I definitely would have to think about um, and, and probably make a decision on rather quickly. Yeah. You just, just think about what you want it to look like. Not that it has to be that way today, but what you'd be open for. You're never going for the commitment, right? You're protecting the commitment, you know? So she should be going for that from you. You're protecting yourself from getting into a commitment that could ruin your life essentially, or be a huge hindrance. And so these women have to prove to you that they're better for you as a compliment than as someone you keep at arm's length or as someone you don't have in your life at all. That's the burden of proof is on them to do that. So that's where your framework should be, of course, but then having that, that vision. So what I, what I find is that uh, for productivity and accomplishing stuff, either monogamy or what I sort of do, which would be, or, or what a lot of guys do, which is having that LTR that on the surface looks exactly like a normal long-term relationship that you would have with, you know, that you could go to a, your, you know, family functions and go to a, 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 a party at work or something and, sh and sh everything's normal. Right. But you occasionally bring in other girls. You don't, you don't have to worry about treating other girls in your life equally now. All right. These girls come in and it serves their purpose to have sexual experiences and a good time with you and your chick, or even sometimes just with you. She realizes that, you know, this is an enhancement of your relationship rather than a hindrance. And then you're not trying to manage like multiple wives because the more girls you add in as more permanent fixtures, the more management you have to do now on those relationships. And that takes away from you achieving stuff. That's the reason why I don't look at it like, oh, bring in, you know, I'm going to bring in another LTR and another LTR. Why don't I do that? It's because I think that would be a lot more to manage. And now my time and energy goes into that. And that's not, that's not good for me. Right. And so you you're, you basically want them if they're spending more time with you and you've invited them more, like, you know, I, I say, draw these, you know, perimeters around you and invite people that you know, like, and trust and have proven themselves closer and closer to the inside of your, you know, perimeters. You want to make sure that they're not a drain on your time and resources, right? Like if you're going to run it this way, you want to make sure that this is not what you're spending all your time on managing drama between you. Cause there's a lot of guys that will fucking run like multiple checks and their life's a nightmare. Like they spend all their time, you know, dealing with like, them fighting with each other and the fucking yeah. cattiness and all this sort of stuff. And if you're getting yourself to a position like that, the juice ain't worth the squeeze, right? Yeah, like I've been in make that sure that you, like, bad. like Paul says, like you have early frame announcement and then you manage that throughout the length of the whole thing. And anytime they get out of line, it's like fucking soft necks. And if they continue to do it, then just get rid of right. it. Like you have to be fastidious about your time and your purpose, you know, here and 
focus on that and don't let these fucking chicks get in the way of that right yeah and so like so now practical going forward you figure out what it looks like and then it's easy to present the frame now because you know what it looks like you're very clear in your purpose now a chick says hey you know wh what are we where we stand and it's been three months you just say hey you know what I've done the long-term relationship and it got bad real fast i don't want to be trapped in that so let's just let things grow organically and see how things go and it's going to be that way for a while and i hope that you're cool with that because if you're not I don't know what to tell you. I want to enjoy my time with you. Let's just keep enjoying our time. And that's your discussion, right? Now, if it's a year down the line, they're like, where do we stand? Or or let's say di differently, right? Let's say there's something that kind of disqualifies her as an LTR. Like, let's say she's showing her butthole on Instagram every day. Yeah, for <laughs> likes, okay? And, and, and But she's cool other than that, right? So then you just kind of look at it and go, you know what? I really like spending time with you. I like our time together. But honestly, you do a lot of things that are not really relationship behaviors. I'm surprised you'd even ask me that question. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, look at your Instagram. I'm not judging yeah. you for it, but I can't be in a relationship with someone who signals to other men like that. So we'll just hang out, have fun, and whatever. We'll see how it goes. Then that's your frame. Watch her behavior change now. Her be more of a qualified prospect for an LTR, or it doesn't change, and you know where to put her. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah, I think I think it's a little early, right? But as well, I mean, this all yeah, it's early, but it's good to plan for it. Yeah, it's it's a good you know, timeline and things to be thinking about. But yeah, man, I'll let you guys move on. I appreciate it, guys. All right, brother. Thanks. See you. All right. All right. Um, got a few super chats here I'm going to catch up on just so I don't get caught up behind. Uh, got an Argentinian just saying, thanks. Do the work. Uh, content since 2018. Your advice has changed my life for the good. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, Pete says, got into a two-year long-term relationship with a 33-year-old single mom with a two-year-old at 19. Dude. You're 19 dating mm. a 33 year old with a kid. <laughs> Ended it with her. Good. Your video has changed my life. Thank you. Congrats. You're welcome, man. Congratulations to you. Your life just improved a thousand fold. Yeah, he saved his life. Holy crap. Yeah. No, man. Uh, I work from home, of course. Oh, that was a Brazilian. Okay. So he's working from home. What was his question here again? Let me go back. I, I think he's here. wondering, like, what else some there other advice to like get out there. And so, um, dude. I was going to say, if you work from home and if like, I mean, are you wondering about um, like meeting more women or I'm not sure what you're, what's missing, I guess, with the question. I don't but... know how old he is. You know what, Duke, <laughs> if you can click through, just click the link and, you know, ask, you know, ask the question live, it'd be easier to do it that way back and forth. I mean, you've already super chat. Okay. I don't want to keep you throwing super chats to ask clarifying questions. So just do that. That'd be a lot easier. Um, yeah. I'll bring you up first because you've already thrown some money at it. So I'll put you at the front of the line. Uh, what do we got here too? Duca got him. Uh, Frito, just uh, a little super chat gift. Thank you. Marissa, congrats on 100 show. It's a very exciting milestone. I appreciate your positivity and clarity on a lot of topics. We'll listen to your book on Audible. Enjoy. Thanks. Uh, it's it's not really a book for women, but I mean, if you want to listen to it, um, you know, you get some idea of what, of what kind of stuff guys have to put up with. And I think you have a daughter, but if you have a son coming, it would be good for you to understand the dynamics that men have to put up with in the world today. So, um, you know, as a mom, it would be good from that perspective. Um, let's see what else we got here. The last dude's LTR will fall victim to alpha seed. I'm not sure which, Sweet. which caller she's referencing, but uh -huh. uh, Amanda <laughs> has an opinion on that. Um, Let's see here. Okay, let me go to the private chat and see who we got in the waiting area. Big Lebowski, you uh, you there? You are? Thumbs up? Okay, I'll I'll pull you in because I know you've been waiting for a while. What's shaking, dude? What's going on? Uh, oh, so this is the dude with really... uh, trying to get hook up the harem stuff. No, that, he was trying to, no, he's trying to get his girlfriend to have a threesome with him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. lucky for you, I, I have a lot of experience in that department. <laughs> if you have any additional questions, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, right. Doesn't, um, has a hard time with uh, sharing. Mm hmm Okay. I would say. How, how'd you present it? But, um, shoot. If that's not why you came oh, in, shoot. we don't have to talk uh, we, about We were it. out one night. <laughs> It's not. It's not why I came in, actually. All right. Yeah. Don't if worry. If you want to skip it. over, no you know, we can uh, talk about what you so, got a question on. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can go to that. Go ahead. So for you, this is, I mean, a hundredth episode, right? Mm -hmm. So 
for the length of your channel, there's incredible consistency there. Keep making videos and like what sort of drivers or indicators? Because like whenever I'm doing something and it's just not working, you know, take it behind the shed, right? Mm -hmm. So what were some of those things for you that you noticed that maybe I, I, I should keep continue making videos. It's worth pursuing and continue on, continue doing. Yeah. So if I understand the question, you're basically asking like, like what are the indicators of doubling down on what you're working on? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, you know, I can take you back to 2015 ish, about a year into the channel. And I was still mostly talking about cars, entrepreneurship, how I'd use parties to hire people, how I would use lawyers in my business, accounting issues. And then I guess um, one day some random dude just said in the comments, because I at the time would still have time to read the comments. Now it's like if I have a video out and it's got a like a thousand, like, I just don't read comments anymore. I don't have time. I do sort the comments by channel members. So if you're a channel member and you ask a question, I'll look for questions and I will respond to you. But I don't have time to read a thousand comments now. But back then, it, I'd, I'd always say in the video. So if you have a video topic suggestion for me, just comment below and I'll consider it. And some dude at the time said, um, you should do a video on the kind of women to avoid dating. I was like, okay, well, screwed up there a few times. And I just kind of broke up with a single mom that wasn't really working out for me. So I talked about that story. And that's that That was around the time when I did the video on you know the three types of women that, that you want to avoid dating. I think there might have been one close to that topic prior to that, you know, maybe like a couple months before, but it didn't really do that well. And most of the time when I'd upload, I'd get like a thousand views and I'd be like, oh, it's not, you know, it's not bad. Maybe 5,000 views. Wow. That's, you know, it's pretty good. But this one in the first week did like a hundred thousand views. And I was like, oh shit, I guess people want to hear more about this kind of stuff. And all I did was I was just talking about my experiences, some stupid choices that I made and what I learned from them. And what I realized was that number was easy to spot. Like it just stood out like a thor like a sore thumb. Like I, you know, you've heard heard me say from time to time, it's like taking a frying pan to the forehead sort of thing. Like those are the obvious moments in life. Well, that video was like a frying pan to the forehead. It was like, okay, maybe I should dive down this part of my life and my experiences and talk about what I've learned. And that kind of led me to other things like the rational mail and red pill and all this other stuff, the mano swamp as it is now today, apparently. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the obvious sign to me. Right. So that was the frying pan of the forehead moment for me. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to look for. You want to look for like a frying pan of the forehead moment where you're like, holy shit, people. It's like, you know, Bitcoin for me yeah. at, at some point in like 2016. Like I knew about Bitcoin in 2012, 2013 when I had lunch with my buddy um, Amir down at uh, where the fuck were we? It was down at uh, Bathurst Center or something like that. We had lunch and he's telling me about Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. That's, that sounds crazy. You know, the banks will shut it down. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, that was not a frying pan to the forehead moment, but it was like 2017 when it was obvious that people were paying attention to this and the media was talking about it. And then I started buying it and I realized that it's not that hard to figure out and it makes kind of, it kind of makes sense. But 2020, like last year, that's when it was like, oh shit, this really makes sense now. Like between 2017 <laughs> yeah. and 2020, that's when I was like, that was like the frying pan to the forehead moment. Now it's like I'm I'm fucking all in on cryptocurrency. Like I fully support it, right? So look for those opportunities if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, frying head, frying pants in the forehead. It's just like, and then you kind of keep on chasing that. Uh, I would imagine in your case, you know, you're chasing that. Okay, how do I replicate that 100k views again, and then and then and so on to grow it. Yeah, and and I mean the other thing that I should add to that, like, there's a lot of you know, like using YouTube as an example, like right now I've got um, on StreamYard, it says I got like 650 live viewers. So most of them are on YouTube. YouTube says 625. So like there's guys out there that'll get thousands of live viewers, tens of thousands of live viewers, but they're talking about red meat stuff, right? It's like it's you entertainment, know, not education. Yeah. yeah. It's like blood sports. You know what I'm saying? Like guys are showing up to watch like, you know, the mall sort of thing. And it's like, could I do that? Yeah. You know, I probably could do that and I could get way more views, but I'm not here for that. Right. So you have to, you have to weigh your values too with the frying pan of the forehead moment because the frying pan will whack you in the forehead and you'll be like, okay, this is obvious. You know, I could do this and this will work, but then you have to ask yourself is what I'm going to do align with who I am. 
right? Or is this something that I don't want to become, right? Yeah. I don't want to become yeah. that 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 dude with thousands of, of views, you know, or thousands of live viewers that I I see some of them and some of them look like frauds to me. You know what I'm saying? Or they're they're pulling on like uh, blood sport strings. It's like, oh, you know, people are there, you know, for like the slaughter. You know, they want to. See. It's like when there's a fucking accident on the highway, and even though the car's pulled over on the side of the road, everybody in that lane, plus the other fucking lane, plus the plane that's in the sky filming it, putting it on on TV, and everybody's watching it from home. They're all looking at the fucking train wreck, right? <laughs> and that's not a good use of time. So. You got to figure out what your boundaries are. And that just happens to be one of my boundaries. Like I never look at the fucking train wreck on the side of the road when there's an accident. I just keep going. Like unless it's, it just happened and they need help, then I'll pull over. But if it's like, you know, the fire trucks there, the tow trucks, what am I going to do? Like I just want to get out of the way and go to where I'm going. Does that make sense? Right. Um, yeah, I hear you. So I have, I have a pretty interesting it's not really that interesting, but uh, I have something that I'd like to share with you. And then maybe you have some, uh, just hear your open thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, a long time friend of mine, uh, since we're like babies, pretty much known each other. And I uh, you know we, we've grown apart and we've grown apart for good reasons. And since then, you know, he's been like dealing drugs and pretty much a bad path. So recently, like within the past several weeks, he got in a car crash, uh, cops, he had a bunch of, you know, illegal stuff on him and, uh, he got out of court. Uh, you know, he, he basically got away scot-free and, uh, you know, his response is, you know, I'm not going to really change what I'm doing. I, I liked what I'm doing, even though I was so close to, to, uh, you know, being put in the way. He's just, you know, I'm just trying to be happy. You know, that's his, I'm just trying to be happy. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts on that sort of line because I was kind of like, I hate let me words. ask you this. Did you read my book? <clears throat> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm finishing the, uh, Amazon book and yours will be next. Okay. So you haven't read it yet. So fire flat, fire fast, higher, slow is in, is in the book. It's one of the chapters. And, um, when you get through the book, you'll understand it, but basically it doesn't matter if you share DNA with somebody. It doesn't matter if they've been a friend since you're a baby. These are the fucking like bullshit stories that we tell ourselves as men. Like we like to complicate our lives and then justify why. I'm going to complicate my life by letting this loser be in my life because I've known him since we were babies. Even though he's a fucking train wreck and everything he does invites chaos into his life, which, which means at some point he's going to bring chaos into your life because you're friends with him. Like you have to hire, hire people mm -hmm. slowly meaning invite them into your life slowly, invite women into your life slowly, take your time to vet them, see what they're all about. And as soon as they show you who they are and if they're a piece of shit, fucking fire them fast, man. Apprentice style. Give them the Cobra like <laughs> fucking Donald Trump did. You're fired. Boom. Just like that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you have to though. Right on chaos. That's just, life. but, but dude, like that's a skill that's hard for guys to learn. Just like it's hard for guys to learn to stop simping for women. Just like it's guys, you know, guys have a hard time, um, you know, learning not to put themselves in a friend zone with women. I know that these aren't really problems that you have, but this is a difficult pill for most guys to, to swallow. Like, oh really? You know, I have to set boundaries with people I've known since I was a baby. Well, that's a novel concept, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's real tough, especially when a lot of your friends, I mean, gosh, I, I hate to be that person, but they're just like, doesn't matter, dude. I mean, quite you don't, frankly, you don't owe anybody shit. Losers. Let me just say this again. You don't owe anybody I do shit. Not. And, and if you let these losers into your inner circle and you let them stay there, you will be inviting chaos into your life. The level of chaos, you know, can be on a scale of one to fucking 10 with 10 being like ballistic, impossible nuclear level sort of shit. And one being very basic, but you will be inviting chaos into your life by letting these losers into them. Got to listen to a man. I, uh, this is a, I had a hard time with this too, dude, a real hard time with this. I had a lot of loser friends growing up guys doing time and stuff, right. For different things. Mm -hmm. So I totally get what you're saying. And, and then even I, I hate to say this cause I don't mean to disparage my, the veteran community or whatever, but I get a lot of guys who come out of combat war zones that are kind of messed up. They got a lot of issues. And instead of being willing to fix or solve those problems, 
they'd rather collect a check and continue to have issues, right? I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. I can't have those people around me because they're going to suck me into their situation. And, and there's an opportunity cost. The biggest thing that you have to recognize is that there's an opportunity cost for how you spend your time and energy. Mm -hmm. So if you're and, and rich is like saying that all over the place in different ways, it's like, you know, when you spend your time and energy on somebody that, especially the, someone who's not demonstrating a capability of being mm -hmm. able to do better, it's taking that time, energy and money and flushing it down the toilet. And that's stuff that doesn't go into the things you need to be working on to make yourself better, dude. It really is. Hey, Paul, so I'd yeah. like, I'd like to add to that. Uh, so, when you say like for the phrase, uh, higher, slow, fire, fast. And when, when you say fire fast, you mean just like completely like gone, like childhood, like all that, you, you know, you could say, uh, let me this, ask you like, this question. Like, would right, you, that, would you invite, done. would you invite a fat single mom with three kids in tow from three different fathers into your life? Yes. Oh, I mean, I what? know, I know Paul would, but what about <laughs> you? know you? that answer. <laughs> The answer is what? No, right? <laughs> of course not. No, well, I'm just kidding. That's, that's obvious. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So why would you let a guy that's a fucking train wreck that gets into a car crash, it's into drugs that like, you know, invites chaos into his life into your inner circle? It's, it's, it's no different. If you're willing to set no, boundaries no, no. Not, with, like, with women, you need to be willing to set boundaries yeah. with other people too. I know well, what you're saying though, like, dude. At a distance. I, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah. So like you basically thing. lose your yeah. phone number. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. they're still around. You're not going to tell them to go yeah. pound sand sort of thing, but yeah, you just don't mm -hmm. respond to them. They text you, you don't you're have busy. To have this they call you, they want to get moment. together, you're busy. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to have this big moment with them where That's they true. sit them down. You know, it's just like you just put your time and energy elsewhere. Like I have a friend, for example, great friends from childhood. He is at the bar probably every night. If I run him in, into in the bar, hey man, we do a shot. It's cool. How you been? Awesome, bro. Like sweet. It, I'm busy with my stuff, man. You're busy <laughs> doing your thing. Cool, whatever. And I go about my life, right? There's no animosity there. It's just that my time and energy gets focused elsewhere. And that's 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 all it is. You know, you don't have to abandon people because I know that's what you're thinking. And there's that. I mean, I get it. I, I get it. You know, but they have to demonstrate the capability to be into your world, your frame. You know what I mean? And if they're doing, if they're not demonstrating that capability, then they're just going to suck you down. If I was putting a lot of time and energy into the guy who hangs out at the bar every day, I, I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. I absolutely could not. I could not nurture my business yeah. and take things in the direction uh, I'm going, but I don't have to have a big moment with him either. You know, I just kind of point in another direction. Now, maybe someday he's building the business and he says, Hey man, uh, I'm building this business, doing some stuff. I understand the work you're trying to do too. Whatever. Let's talk about that. Okay, cool. Like that's fine then, right? Depends. You just got to decide if they're going to be a toxic force or not, and then just kind of let them go that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have um, I have a short video clip uh, that I posted to Twitter. I'm trying to dig it up because Hype Fury posts so much for me now um, of Snoop Dogg explaining this very concept with people mm. in your life that just don't make the cut. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep looking for it. I will find it because I know it was in the last three or four weeks. I just have to keep scrolling and scrolling until I find a damn thing. But it 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 exemplifies the point very very well, and it'll make complete sense to you. Uh, just give me a second here. Why are right, you looking you for? I'll throw a quick comment. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say so. Quick comment, double? dude. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Lebowski. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Does that go double for family? Just because it's you share DNA, it doesn't change anything. Um, yeah, it's the same, man. It's just the same. I, I, I'll tell you how bad it was me not wanting to, you know, abandon my friends and all that stuff. I've given away a Cadillac before. I gave, I let a dude borrow my Cadillac. I haven't seen it back yet. <laughs> like, I mean, I had a few cars, you know what I mean? And, and it, I was, there were no McLarens, okay? But I had BMW, I had a Cadillac. Veteran friend got in some trouble. His car, I was having trouble. Tossed him the keys. He said, hey, you know, just give back when you, you know, when you're done and you get your stuff back and you figure your stuff out. Well, long story short, guy, guy, the car disappears and gets thrown in jail. <laughs> and so I don't care. It's just a car. But here's the thing. That was a waste of energy and time, right? That was a waste of money. I could have taken that Cadillac, sold it, put it into Bitcoin, and then donated all the Bitcoin to charity if I wanted to. Done way better impact than doing what I did, right? And so, 
yeah, you can learn these lessons as you go along. <laughs> All right, so listen up, because Snoop's about to I'm, break I'm sure your gut told you, too. Oh, yeah. All right, you ready? This is yep. the gap when we start. This is the gap as you grow. Notice how you grow and they don't. So how do you close the gap? You got to come back down. Mm. When you come back down, you lose. Mm. So you got to keep going up. That's why closing that gap got to be them catching up to you. Mm. And if they don't catch up, you got to leave them behind. Be All right. If they don't catch up, you got to leave their asses behind. That's it. You know, it's as simple as that. You're going to get out of life what you tolerate. If you tolerate mediocrity from people in your inner circle, don't expect your life to be one of excellence. You're going to have chaos in it. You are inviting chaos into it. You have a choice. You know, these guys can either come up to you or you can leave them behind. You don't have to go go down to their level. Make sense? Right on. Now, if you want all right, to get to the, the threesome stuff, um, we could talk about that. <laughs> we can do some stuff. Yeah, very, exactly. very quickly, because I got a lot of guys in the waiting area. So go to the uh, threesome stuff with uh, Paul real, real quick. Let me just ju drop a quick thing, because I don't think we have a ton of time for it, man. Like, here's the thing. So their concern with bringing another girl is that she's going to lose status with you. That you're going to want that other girl and you're going to be sexually attracted to the other girl and that she loses because of that. Her concern isn't that, you know, that isn't about like the same kind of jealousy that we have as a male. It's a concern of losing status in your life. So when you flip the frame around as if, hey, you know what? this is actually going to bring us closer together. This is actually going to make us more solid. This is actually going to be better for the both of us. And we'll have a stronger relationship because of it, not, you know, despite of it. And when that frame shift happens, she is not, not only on board with it, but she's enthusiastic about it. This is especially the case if she's experienced this before or had those ideas. So there you is go. That, is that enough? Would, would you say that's enough for, her to actually find the girl or is that for you to actually bring the girl and then so but my my take on it is let her find the girls okay. that's better to start yeah yeah so like like she's got to have yeah. some skin in the game otherwise it's going to be a bad experience like i had a threesome when i was a lot younger in my 20s and it was like taking turns it wasn't a threesome it was like you know it's you and the one girl and then it's like you and the other girl. <laughs> And they're not doing anything, right? Because because yeah. there's some resentment there, there's some pushback. And these two girls were like best best friends. Like one was my girlfriend, the other one was like her best friend, right? We're sitting around. This is like back in the blockbuster days, and we go to the video store, and it's like, oh, let's get a movie. And you see this movie on, you know, this movie on the shelf, and it's called Threesome. I'm like, yeah, let's get that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you want her like with skin in the game, so that so that you actually have a menage a trois. It's not just like you know you're taking turns. Right. Actually, and make it about her in, in the on. experience. And in fact, even if you don't actually insert, we'll say, into the other girl for that first experience, you know what I mean? Think of it. It's a dripping. It's a dripping effect, right? You don't have to go all in at first. Maybe you're just sort of messing around with the other girl and, and the girl is helping you with her. Right. And she might help out the other girl, but you stick to just your girl to start off. Right? You're not going to end up that way the whole time with your first experience. And, and she, she has to have condition that, hey, you know what? This is safe. This is cool. He likes me better. He wants me better more. I have higher status with him now and more security in this relationship for having done that. Oh, that was really – and it was a lot of fun. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm game for doing this again. That's, that's where you want to put her. Hopefully that makes sense. When you talk more technique stuff, hit me up like email or something, dude. <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah that, that, yeah <laughs> all right brother we'll see you later okay <laughs> thanks all right um just trying to make some space to catch up on on some of these uh we're at an hour hour and 23 minutes and so so voice is holding up i think i can keep going for another half hour hour uh let's see what we got here with i'm the down super. for whatever homie <laughs> all right man um yeah you can hang out as long as you want man you know you're you know you're welcome around Ooh, nice um one. Leandro with a R55. I'm not sure what that. That's South African, isn't it? R R55. Uh yeah, I think so. Uh, thank you for your effort. Uh, you've been putting in these past years. Learned a lot. Bring Sean some time. Miss him. 
Yeah, Sean's a cool dude. Um, Sean's awesome. I like him. He's cool. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Billy Billy Zachary. No, hang on. Let's get Billy Zachary. There we go. Thanks for the life advice. I wish somebody would have said the same things to me when I was in high school before the train wrecks. Yep. Yes, sir. That's why I'm doing this, man. Make sure you guys don't screw up your lives. Hamid, uh, congratulations on the... That's a very generous super chat. Thanks, brother. 100th episode. I think it's only fitting to match your 100th episode with a tiny Benjamin. Thank you. Uh, the amount of things I've learned from you, Rolo, and others has been life-changing. Thank you, and keep up the good fight, my brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. That was pretty awesome. Um, all right, let's see what we got here in the private chat in the background area. Again, if you guys want to hop in and ask a question, I should be on for a little bit longer. There's the link for, oh, I put it in the wrong chat. Let me put it in the live chat here. Sorry. There's the link in the live chat. Uh, back to the private chat. Let's see who we got in here. All right. Uh, Mike Glenn, uh, cleaning your life. Seamus, Seamus, I think you've been waiting for a while. Oh, no, wait, hang on. It got uh, 30, 32. 32 is gone. Okay. Um, Seamus, I'll pull you in because you got a question here about uh, making room for progress. So, how you doing, man? You're back. Hey, how's it going? Going good. Yeah, I sent the super chat earlier. Um, Thank you. I'm here in the car in honor of uh, the first video of yours I saw you driving very, around. Very good, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, congratulations. Real quick, I want to throw a topic out there. I'll give you two examples and see what y'all's take and any more uh, ideas is it's clearing out your life to make room for progress. Mm -hmm. uh, one example is uh, I had a real issue with society saying I should be friends with my exes. And I noticed that they called me a lot to be the emotional tampon. And I finally told them, look, lose my number done. Mm -hmm. Go away. Uh, second thing was uh, cleared out a whole bunch of the mm -hmm. stuff from the garage, got the, the weight set set up. I'll be hosting that on my channel for part of the mm -hmm. progress, but I wanted to give those examples, kind of open the floor and see what are some good ideas for you from you guys about clearing out your life from things that get in the way of progress and opening up room for future progress. <clears throat> All right. So I'll give you one of the best sound bites you can use with exes. Um, this works especially well with ex-wives, uh, ex-girlfriends you might've lived with, had an LTR with, and they're looking to use you as an emotional tampon or, or just ask you for help or assistance with something. The Wi-Fi router is not working. What do I do, Seamus? Da, 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 da. I don't work for you anymore. <laughs> that works for everything. Mm -hmm. I don't work for you anymore. Because a lot of the times, they they seem to have these expectations that... <laughs> you're, you're fired. That, yeah, that you're that useful idiot, you know, that's, that's, that's always going to be available mm -hmm. to them to solve their problems. Because let's be honest, like... Women have been sold this lie their entire life that they're that they're extremely valuable and men should bend the knee to them and all this sort of stuff. And I, you know, I continue to teach you guys to set some boundaries and be firm with them and why you should and how it serves you better. And it, it, it actually serves your relationships better too. But just simply saying I don't work for you anymore, those words alone, those 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 few words solve a lot of problems and it sends a very, very clear message to them. Yeah, and not a single one of them that I told to lose my number. None of them reacted well. I got hung up on by one of them. The other one started yelling. I hung mm -hmm. up on her. Uh, the other one just immediately started crying, and I'm like, no, I'm done. Bye. Yeah, I don't work yeah. for you anymore because yep. they seem to think for some reason that you're still fucking available to them to fix their problems or to be their emotional tampon. Just tell them. Oh, yeah. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> I am. I am no longer yep. your fucking employee, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then the second yeah, part dude. of that was <laughs> Oh yeah. Second part. No, the second part no, it was just an example of like okay. things that I've done uh recently. I've seen if y'all had any more ideas like um by the end of the month I'm gonna quit smoking. Made room in the garage for uh the weight set. I've got a bench set and a squat rack. Uh, um that oh. way I'm not built for you know, lifting um redoing the all of that kind of stuff. Um, just making room in your life in general for progress. Yeah, dude. Well, a lot of it is Rich talks about it all the time too. I've said it, talked about it too in other other ways. Um, just managing your fucks, right? I mean, mm -hmm. just stop giving a fuck about these things, dude. Like, I just don't have time to give a fuck about bullshit. Like, I don't. And so, like, if I'm it, it when guys are wondering, or you know, guys that are not you necessarily, but guys listening, they're like, man, how do I, you know, how do I 
you know, get rid of some of these toxic forces in my life or these friends or these ex-girlfriends or whatever. Like I need to, their ankle, their ankle weights. How do I get rid of them? Stop giving a shit. I mean, if you're focused and the other part is, is do yep. more shit for what you need to be doing. If you're doing so much shit every day to get you ahead with what you need to be doing, you just don't have time. And that becomes what's important. And then you're not even calling that ex back that texted you or whatever. You just don't have time for that shit. You know what I mean? It's just, you're just moving on and people will deal with it. You know, they'll deal with it and they'll understand it. hundred percent. Cool. Or they won't. And it's not my problem. <laughs> I learned that from you guys. Not my problem. Yeah. Another very good I, line. I, I love being able to say that these days. Don't make your problems. My problems. Yeah. Huge thing right there. That works with a lot of different scenarios. Girlfriends, oh, yeah. ex-girlfriends, friends. Yep. Doesn't matter. Family even, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, a lot of people seem to think that their lack of preparation on their part constitutes an emergency on your part, right? <laughs> I know it I know it might sound cold and people are like, oh Rich, you're Good so stuff, cold. Man. And, you know, you know, you're an asshole. No, I just you know, that's just the but way you're not though. You're you just deciding to it's the it's yeah, it's the weirdest thing. It's I always thought being an asshole was a bad thing. I've found the more I enforce my boundaries and act like an asshole, all of a sudden people that never listen to what I had to say, they're suddenly mm -hmm. respecting me now. Correct. Yeah. Well, and, and I will say too, I help I help people out all the time, man. It's fine, but the difference is I do it on I do it without sacrificing myself to do so and setting boundaries. And you know what happens when you set boundaries and when you do help somebody out, they appreciate it. 10 times more because they know that you value yourself and they value what you're doing and you're taking time from that to help them. They appreciate it. They don't appreciate it. And they become entitled when you are trying to make everyone else's problems, your problems, and you're not on your own purpose. Then people become entitled and expect you to, you know, to do more and, and, and that you didn't do enough. You know what I mean? So th that's the thing. You can help people. You just do it on your terms, you know, hundred percent. All right, brother. It sounds good, guys. Thank you very right, much. Uh, be night. sure to you know check out uh, Coffee Medic and let me know what y'all think. Coffee what? See Coffee you later. Coffee Medic. Coffee, coffee medic. medic. Okay. Coffee yeah. underscore Medic. Yeah. All right. And it'll have so a picture of my uh, coffee mug. All right, man. Thanks. Yep. Thank you very much, guys. Y'all are amazing. That's it. Thanks, brother. Thirty two is right. back on, I think. Yeah, thirty two is back. Is uh, Dan? So I'll pull Dan in a sec. Let me just grab these super chats here to. Get them uh, dealt with. We got Mexican Iron Man who says, you've helped me understand what happened with me and my ex. And more importantly, now I'm on a solid purpose maintaining frame. I'm 52, spinning three plates, age 28 to 34. My man, yeah. <laughs> and having a killer year in business. Thanks to you, we'll be scheduling a session soon. Whenever you're ready, brother. Boom. That's what I do. Hell That's yeah. what I do. Amanda, I used to be a woman. They are the worst. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back to private chat here. Uh, Dan, 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 where you are, Dan, the man. All right, Dan, there you go, brother. What's shaking? You're talking about, uh, I think, marriage or red pill marriage or something. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for bringing me on, and congratulations on your 100th here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'm at the kind of the phase in my life where I got on the red pill train maybe about 2016. So been in it for a long time i don't know when you started content but your stuff yeah. started popping up in my feed in youtube and i thought this is really great stuff so um you know the, the thing the hole i see in the red pill community because i always used to go on the reddit so i didn't read everything there um they never had a good answer for the marriage question i know that rollo talks about it um, a lot. He's one of like the only red pill guy in the space that's married, but mm -hmm. you know, like what is the, where is the resource to go and look at, you know, where's the best place to get married? Uh, obviously prenup, you know, you have to go prenup. You just, all the resources, that's, that's one of the glaring holes I see in the red pill community. And I'm trying to fill that knowledge so gap the, for myself. So, okay. So that's a very, uh, like that's a question I get a lot and um, I'm, I'm going to put the ticker down on the bottom, but get on my email list because I am going to put out a course this year on vetting for an LTR slash wife slash mother stock. Why do you want to get married? 
Uh, you know, at this point, I don't believe in the whole true love and anything like that. The reality is that, you know, I've met a girl who uh, she's the good mother material. And that's that's what I'm looking for at this point, because I at about 30 years old, I decided, you know, actually, I do want to have kids. Okay. And at this day and age, there's no reason to get married unless you want to have kids. So really, it, for me, you know, everything that I've, you know, I've vetted her pretty well. Um, I was she was one of three girls about a year and a half ago. And she just really stood out. And honestly, with, I'm a part owner of an engineering company. And uh, my side projects, I didn't have time to be juggling plates as much anymore. It just was too much time kind of wasted, in my opinion. So um, she's good okay. mother material, which is rare these days. You know, she cooks. She'll bring me food. She does all this really great stuff. But, you know, I, I know that there's still going to be pitfalls here and there. My thing is about how do I protect myself best way, right? That's what it's all about these Got days it. for Got it. Yeah. Marriage. <clears throat> Got it. So that's a real long conversation. Like we did, um, we did rule zero live last October, I think it was, which was a private event and it was online. So, you know, we couldn't do it in person. And my talk was basically on this topic and there was an hour of content there that I essentially took from about eight hours, which I could have done, <laughs> done all the talk on. Cause we only had an hour each, you know, to mm -hmm. dispense the advice. Um, so, like the course itself, when I put it out, is going to cover all the details, but start by reading my book. And one of the core things that I'm going to spend some time on in this when I put it out for guys, so they hopefully don't make a train wreck of their life. I mean, the first thing you have to understand is there's no way to completely vet insanity out of your life. And the other thing you have to understand is women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. I've, I've, I've talked to well over a thousand guys now on one-on-one -on -one consults. And there's one thing that's become clear. There's a lot of guys going through the divorce grinder, going through the divorce machine that um, didn't really see it coming. You know, they they just, and it's not because they were too blue-pilled or they were too beta. It's like, there's a lot of guys that had some frame in their marriage and their long-term relationship. And because things change over time, five years oh, yeah. goes by, 10 years goes, goes by, she, you know, she will modify her behavior. Like where she's at at 30 is not going to be where she's at at 40. And where you're at right now versus where you're at at 40 will also change too. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I completely, yeah, 100%. I agree with everything you said. I mean, and for me, it's not even like a happily, no, just saying a happily ever after. If anything, what all I'm looking for is to protect myself for at least the next 18 years once a kid is born. You know, because I have looked at all the data for so raising much, yeah. children, right? You know, and so it's like I want to set my kids up for the right life. And so I want to be able to do a two-parent household thing for at least 18 mm -hmm. years, raise those kids. So it's just about how do I protect my assets and, and protect myself from the meat grinder. And I know that maybe it's... Where do you live? It's not flawless, but... Oh, Where do you live? Yeah, like uh, state or unfortunately, uh, California. So the first thing I would suggest you do is move the fuck out move? of California. Good God. Like, yeah. are you, like, yeah. like, are you willing to leave the state and go to a yeah, state that's more really... friendly to fathers? Yeah, we were actually looking to move our company to Texas. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not the easiest to just move a company all of a sudden. We're kind of in the works of doing that. But um, 100%, I agree. The politics that this is the worst place for this kind of, uh, you know, someone with, the way I understand the world and trying to protect myself against, you know, uh, divorce, uh, graped later or whatever. So, um, yeah, that's, it's, uh, not that's, ideal. It's not even that it's not ideal. It should be a deal breaker, right? Like yeah. if you're going to oh, get married, 100%. it should be a deal breaker to not do it in California. Oh, I would not. No, hundred percent. I would not. And, and I right. did. So I got your book today and I skipped the marriage <laughs> chapter and listened to it real quick. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely down for going somewhere else to get married, but that's where that whole gap of knowledge thing comes in where it's like, is there a list? Like, where do I go see like, all right, here's the best state. Uh, you know, here's what you need. This will lower your risk to the smallest potential chance of getting ruined later in the divorce courts. That type and, of thing, you know. And that's why I'm going to put all this information in a course behind a paywall because I'm, because I'm going to have to research all that and talk to some lawyers and make sure oh, yeah. all the information is accurate. But yeah, like that would don't be get the married starting without point. take a richest course first. Uh, well, <laughs> For real though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like the kidding. starting point, you know, of course, is to be red pilled, you know, to be on your purpose and yeah. make sure you put that first. So 
obviously, you know, read my book, read Rolo series, read tactical guide to women. Mm -hmm. So you're making sure you're vetting, you know, the mother's stock properly. There's a lot of things that you'll need to do to make sure that you can minimize the risk. Can you, can you minimize the risk to, to fuck zero? Probably not, but I mean, you'll probably yeah. reduce it to the point where it's not going to be a, a significant problem in your life. And if it is a problem later on down the road, if you have to untie the knot, you've structured your life in such a way and you live in a, a part of the world so that you've, you've, you're able to minimize the risk of the fallout, right? And you're going to have have yourself fully prepared for it because it sounds unromantic. It sounds like something most guys are, are, are going to be unwilling to do. But the fact of the matter remains, the biggest choice that you're going to make in your life today as a guy is if you're going to get married and who you're going to wife up and how you're going to minimize the risk for all that because that is the number one thing that puts a noose around men's necks. I can tell you from my experience, because I met a uh, Turkish uh, plastic surgeon whose job is basically to reconstruct the faces of uh, people who have either accidents, um, you know, fire burns, uh, war. But one of his biggest customers, one of his biggest clientele was guys putting a gun either in their chin or in their mouth and not angling properly to do it right, and they blew their face off, and you would have to reconstruct their face because they were doing this over a woman or over divorce. And they're completely yeah. untrained with a firearm. I just thought I'd add. Anyway, this is a very, very long home. conversation, but 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 get yourself yeah. fully red filled and you know prepare to. Basically, you need to prepare yourself to untie the knot because the chances of it happening are going to be fifty percent. Like if you look at the marriage stats. 50% of marriages end in divorce after about seven years. And mm. there's 50% that stay married. But I also know that based on other studies, uh, less than 3% of people that are together for that period of time live in a state of bliss, meaning that they're obsessed with, e with each other. And 13% live in a state where they actually love each other. So of the 50% less, the chances being you might be stuck in a bullshit marriage that you're either too much of a coward to leave, she's too much of a coward to leave, or maybe you know, you don't have the options to leave because of whatever reasons, you know, insert a whole bunch of lines. So yeah, it's a high risk proposition, long story short. Yeah. I, mean, I just the, want to throw in yeah, one thing, yeah, Dan. Yeah. yeah so yeah. dude, just one thing I caught, it's kind of want you to think about this because I just kind of caught it. It's a bit of an undertone. All right. I don't want you to sell yourself short from what you actually want and having an amazing relationship with somebody if that's what you want. And I'm saying that because I'm hearing a lot of, well, I don't believe in the true love myth anymore. Okay, we know that love is not how it is in a blue-pilled sense, right? We know that. But because you're saying that and because of where your focus is, I think that you assume that you're going to be in a relationship that's maybe not that great and this chick's going to end up going away, right? You're 30 years old, dude. You're just now coming into your sexual market value. Really. You're not even peaking right now. You understand? Like your peak is not going to be for another five years or so. It sounds like you're doing really well in business, which is cool. But there's a lot of things to work on in, in that you're going to level up several times between now and 35. So the access to women is going to be much greater, much better. And then the other side of it is, is frame, dude. Like when you have really good frame with a chick, she's madly in love with you. I mean, that's just oh, the yeah. way it goes. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and so so and aim for that, you know. And and, yeah. and just a suggestion. I, I mean, I have a frame series on my channel that you can go. It's free. You can watch it, and it'll have help you set frame with a woman. Ryan Stone does some good stuff on LTR game as well, and so he's got good stuff. So outside of Rich's stuff, and I'm serious about taking this course. I'm not kidding. He guys pay him a lot of money to. To, to get that question answered on a one-on-one -on -one consult. So if he has a course for it, take it. But also these are some things you can action now is uh, get on Ryan's channel and uh, check out my frame series, dude, because you, you want to be able to, what's going to, the best thing is to not have the divorce happen in the first place. Of course, you know, set yourself up for success. And if it does happen, cool. You know, you, you, you have your exit strategy, but the best thing is that you maintain frame in this relationship and you're part of this, st the, the less statistics that rich had said, part of the 13% that's happy or even a better, a part of the 4% and complete bliss throughout your relationship. If that's what you want. You know what I mean? It's better for the kids yeah. and better for you. So, so that's all I wanted to kind of add that in, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, pre I appreciate that. Those, those are really great points. Um, I, 
you, uh, in honest, all honesty, she's pretty crazy about me. She's the one who, of course, approaches the net level type stuff. Um, I feel like I have really good frame in the relationship, but you know, we we all know the light switch mentality, right? So mm-hmm. with women, right? So it's like you know everything's great, and then you, like, and so right now, what I'm looking to do is essentially that insurance policy, right? So it's like you know we can all do the best frame. At, and you could be 99% perfect with it and maybe something and all of a sudden it could be totally control. You do as much as you can and hundred percent agree yeah, with everything. You protect you just yourself hundred percent. Yeah. Yep, but then yep. it's just like, this is that insurance policy, you know, and that's what I'm trying to kind of shore up on the beginning. So appreciate it though. That cool. you guys, yeah. uh, all right, Dan, thanks for hopping on, man. I appreciate right. it. See you later. All right. Um, I'm going to try to get to everybody tonight before I wrap up. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six left. So let's let's try to wrap through these six. Uh, let me get these super chats. Uh, Dylan says, long time viewer, Rich, love the channel. Congrats on the milestone. My question is, do you recommend physiotherapy to deal with feelings? Oh, psychotherapy to deal with feelings of anxiety. Um, I do not recommend psychotherapy, generally speaking. I think a lot of the stuff that you can deal with the conscious mind comes from fully like accepting the truth that the red pill brings. Again, the whole point of the red pill is not to, you know, make you hate or be angry at anybody. It's to not, to not hate them for what they can never be. you right. You know, to kind of blow up those lies. Um, if you do need su- some help with, uh, the subconscious mind, uh, Paul does hypnosis and I would recommend you book him for a hypnotherapy session. How much do you charge for the session, Paul? Uh, it's three, 300. It's, no. it's, it's a really good rate. I've, I've done hypnotherapy twice. Um, and you'll find that it's useful if you've got uh, sticking points in the subconscious mind. Um, JP says having trouble closing, I get the date and conversation going, but then I can't get them to bed. What should I do? Any tips? <laughs> It's really hard to spelling. diagnose. Yeah, <laughs> start with spelling, but now we're now we're gonna get called mean. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's really hard, you know, hard to diagnose. Um, you know, something like that with a quick super chat. There's there's any number of things that could be going wrong. So uh, just want to thank you for the super chat and invite you to hop on one of the live call-ins next time. Um, even the Godfather said it could end all tomorrow. Be careful, right? I mean, yeah. Rollo's been married for twenty four plus years or whatever it is, and even he understands that. You know. She could wake up one day and say, you know what? Rolo Tomasi is not the best I can do anymore. Kevin from sales oh. looks good. hundred percent. hundred percent. You know, I just, you know, I want guys to think about both. I feel like sometimes just guys will settle for a crappy relationship because she's good wife stock. Kind of yeah. wanted to make sure he wasn't doing that one. You know? Yeah. Um, another super from the Antonio Brazil says the best States are Arkansas, Arizona, and Kentucky. I have the data in great detail, custody and child support. There you go. There's a little tip for you. Uh, Talia says, I've been married to my husband for seven years and he's not wrong about frame. We're not, <laughs> we're not wrong about much Talia. You know, when we talk about stuff, uh, I don't think we're, uh, we're wrong very often if I'm being <laughs> honest here. No. Um, okay. Let's, let's see here where we got the private. I think, uh, Andrew. All right, Andrew, I'm going to pull you in real quick. How you doing, brother? I'm good. You, said you had a general man. statement and something about the book. Yeah, so just wanted to you know let you know. Congrats on the hundred video. Uh, the other thing I've I've noticed is I read the book entirely. Um, holy shit, view on everything is completely different. It's it's the best best thing I've, that's ever happened, and Thanks. I'm only twenty two. Good, good. And guys, if you haven't got it, again, if you're just joining the stream, you don't know what it is. You're new to the planet. <laughs> Get the unplugged alpha. It's on Amazon. It's cheap as hell. Kindle seven bucks. Prints like ten or twelve bucks or whatever it is. And Audible. I narrated it myself. It's worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and you know what? Honestly, when I was reading the or listening to the Red Flags chapter, you mentioned I think one of them. What I may have been in one of your videos too. I don't remember, but one of them was where on the dating app specifically, you're like uh, some of them will pose with different angles, mm-hmm. and then you know you're going to find out that they actually weigh more than they actually are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Noticed it several times after hearing that, and I was like, holy shit, this man is the Godfather. Fat the, fish, that's what we call that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Getting, yeah. They call they used to call it catfishing, but it's really getting fat fished. Uh, that's exactly what I yeah. was thinking when and, I saw it. It's like three. And three women know that with with filters and lighting, and especially angles. Like if they do the angle from up here down when they have like a push up bra on, and they get the right angle, 
you'll get fooled a lot if you don't know what, you know what you're looking for. So that's why I always tell guys, you know, get to the IRL, the in real life, you know, point quick and make it a, a, a hour long sniff test. Um, and you'll be able to vet through, you know, a lot of the manipulative time wasters. There's also other signs too. I mean, if you only see like four pictures and they're all headshots, the other telltale sign too is the more cropped in the pictures are like, um, if it's just like a cropped in picture of an eyebrow or an eye or something like that, you're guaranteed dealing with a land whale. Like you're going to want to call Greenpeace and say, look, we got another one that made it out of the water. We have to solve this problem and get them off the fat fish sites. Sort of thing. But the more crop the pictures are guaranteed, you're, you're going to be more, more than disappointed when you meet them in uh, person. So make sure you get head to toe. Yeah. It's funny because that's a good point you raise is on this one profile specifically, all it was was like to hear, and it was always the side angles. Yeah. And then, and then the other day I discovered it, and you see the full body, full body uh, mm. mirror picture. At Whoa. least, you know what I mean. So, so, so a really good line that you can use for that is, "Hey, do you have any other pictures? Because I want to make sure that I'm not going to meet a floating head, right? Because <laughs> if it's just head pics or like close cropped in of like an eye or something like that, it's like." Hey, you know, can I see a few other pictures? I want to make sure I'm not going to meet a floating head. Like you have a body, right? Yeah. It's not some like, you know, pillow that's lying on your bed, right? If if they get offended by that, just unmatch them, block them, get rid of them because they're I've, Yeah, I've had to do that. Not waste your time. I don't have time for that crap. Good, good. Move you can move to video chat too. That was the thing that we developed with clients uh doing pickup with clients that with a pandemic sometimes women too are a little nervous about going directly to a guy's house or whatever there's mm -hmm. some that it will and some will just bang you in five seconds of knowing you but i mean obviously a lot of girls were sort of figuring out navigating the dating market when they can't go out someplace so you're gonna have them come over or you're gonna end up going over there and so doing a quick video chat first for your sake as well as to give her that comfort was good but for your sake so you can see more of what she looks like in video and you can have that one-to-one -one exchange and make sure she's a real person it can be helpful both oh, with yeah. the close ratio as well as that vetting you know i just found it funny because like <laughs> when i was so, when i was 18 you know four or five years ago not a clue but you know <laughs> 22 and then you know it's like completely eye-opening but but then you see some of these guys that are like you know 45 going on you know pushing 50 and they still don't have a clue and it's like i'm younger than you guys how do you how have you not figured this out and you're still getting fooled right all the wrong info bro that's how yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you don't have to worry about them you know don't let their problems become your problems you just focus on yourself and you know you'll get the all i results. worry about is like you said chase excellence and fulfill my purpose that's it awesome thanks for hopping on andrew yeah no problem take care brother yeah. All right, uh, Mick, I'm going to get to you in a second. You had a question about uh, networking with high-value friends. Let me just make sure I don't have any supers here I missed. Uh, seven years. Do, do, do. Grab this one here real quick. Randy says, hey, Rich, I'm currently finishing a graduate degree in AI in the summer and turning 26th month, next month. I do want to start a business, and I don't know if getting an entry-level job will be a better alternative. Any suggestions? If you're getting a degree in AI, why not take an apprenticeship or a co-op placement or something like that? Oh, you're in the UK. So yeah, uh, so, something along those lines I would start with. And if you're single, you don't have any kids, you know, you can maneuver. Don't just limit yourself to finding a job where you live. If you're, you know, if your skills are in demand and AI is, is a part of the future, don't be afraid to move. You know, there's other places in the world that you can live that might treat you better, where you have a better tax rate and a uh, nicer climate or whatever. So don't just limit yourself to where you're at, you know, broaden that scope is another piece of advice that I give you for that. All right, we're caught up. Uh, Mick, you had a question about high value uh, or, or networking with high value friends, was it? Yes, hello, hello guys, thank you we'll for it. having me. Uh, wow, just uh, you guys, great job. I, I found about you last year um, around November when I had a, a breakup and your video popped up there it was just eye-opening i am 34 now and uh i'm a little pissed because i just found about you guys now <laughs> <laughs> it's like where were you guys all this time you know um, well i didn't know these like much of this stuff 10 years ago so uh, don't you know, don't beat yourself up too bad when i see those 22 the people who are 22 i'm like 
discuss the time. But anyways, mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm looking at it in a in a very pra- pragmatic way. Um, I'm not from here. I'm originally from Africa. Uh, I've been here for quite some time. Um, Where do you live? Where, where's uh, here? I I live in well St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm I'm chasing. I want to chase excellence, you know, because I'm trying to build my 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 value. Uh, but that's where that's that's the problem I have with. Uh, when I read I read the Rollo book, um, I, I have your book. I'm reading it. I had this uh, you know New Year resolution kind of thing going on. You know, you're so excited, you want to do it, but after a certain time, it just fades. You know, mm. how do you keep that drive going? You know to build and sometimes i know you maybe you need to to meet uh to find the community of high value men as well where do you find them I, i'm like where are they this is I like a, a did you plant this guy so you could advertise your community <laughs> no but i mean like since we're here <laughs> just jump on there man get all, in the community it's Paul, worth it. paul's in my community comps yeah. in my community chris moffitt's in my community <laughs> I mean, I could go down the list of all the comments. I mean, the reason why yeah. these guys are here and the why they're getting great results is because they decided to put themselves in a better room. So I always tell guys, look, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. So move to a better room. In some cases, you can move to a better room and you'll be able to network with better people. And in other cases, you have to buy your way into a better room. So there was a year that I spent $35,000 roughly uh, leveling myself up on self-improvement. Ooh. And I'd spend seven thousand dollars to go to a conference. I would spend, you know, twelve thousand dollars to do a seven-day retreat with a bunch of other high-level entrepreneurs racing off-road dune buggies in the desert in Baja, Mexico. Like, I could go right down the list, but it's like, you know, one way to get into better rooms is to is to really just buy your place in there. And there's a reason why that's behind the paywall. It's because, you know, that exclusivity creates a better environment for other people. Otherwise, if it was free, I mean, you, you could just go to Reddit. You go to Reddit, there's a bunch of idiots over there that are arguing about dumb shit. And they're really, you know, for the most part, nobody's, right? Yeah. But premium sort of environments, like like better men hang out in higher tier places. So, you know, that's... Do you, do you have any advice for, like, where I live? I know I'm... You know, I mean, well, Conk, well, Conk lives in KC. You know, he just put that in the uh, comments over there. But if you want to get yeah. in the community or, or to learn more about how it works, go there. I'm going to jack up the price at the end of April. Um, so, <laughs> hey, guys, you want to get in, get in. I mean, okay. I usually jack up the price once every six months. So, and I haven't done it about nine or 10 months. So it's due for a price increase. And, and the reason and why this- I do that is, is it because it levels up everybody that's in the community. And, and people that are that are there from two or three years ago, they're grandfathered in at their original membership price. It's just the new guys coming in, the tiers get better and better. And the guys that stay around are staying around because they're leveling you know, themselves up. Guys will leave too, but the guys that stay around over the years, it's because they're getting better too. Do you guys uh, have like a how to, because I see a lot of help self book out there. It's more about what to do. I'm... I'm an engineer. I'm, I'm not into the what to do. I want to see the process, like how. And I, I don't know. Yeah, it's something I have to figure out on my own, but I, I want to see how people are doing it, you know? Uh, That's why I get in the community. Like, so let me just know. I, I know I keep saying the same damn thing, but look, dude, I'm going to tell you from a dumb infantry guy perspective. I'm not an engineer. I'm just a dumb guy who has an <laughs> army. Okay. But look, I, uh, I had... I had to ask myself, you know, after being having a number of business coaches through real estate and doing well, but also being held back at the same time, you know, oh, they keep saying you're a product of the five people you hang out with, this, that, and the other. So I'm like, yeah. dude, how do I, with, I'm in this area, these people are not living their lives the way that I would want to live my life. So how do I change that? We'll just pretend my camera didn't do that, and I'll keep talking. I'll pick that in a second. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to level up my technology, bro. I actually got a guy coming next week to uh, help me with it. But, um, you know, I had to ask myself, okay, how do I change that? I don't have – these guys are not exa- – even the guys who are really successful make, making, you know, into the mid-six figures – or in these blue pill marriages, they're they're miserable in other aspects of their life, or they're straight fucking pussies, to be honest. And so, like, I'm like, dude, I, I need to be around some dudes who are doing things a different way than this other formula. Cause even when I made really good money in real estate, 
I was killing myself to do it and not in a good way. It was what Rich uh, calls a, I think it's, you call it a, a half business rather than an elf business or whatever. Half, I'm yeah. Not... Hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating. Yeah, yeah. So it was a half business. I was running and I was killing myself. And then I had other people killing themselves going, well, this is just what you got to do to be happy or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, so I don't suck in a barrel in a year. Let's see if I can find a different way. And then I gravitated towards Rich, Rich's channel. I said, I'm going to try this community because I'm going to get in touch with other people all over the world who are doing different things. Let's see how they're living their lives different, you know? And that, uh, dude, these guys are living way different than me, way different. And I was like, oh shit, okay, well, this is what I need to do. And then I started figuring out my own formula. So there's someone giving you the instructional manual, you make your own instructional, man instructional manual because you see how other people are doing it. And that's why, man, I'm a big advocate of the community. Not, I'm not just for no reason. It really helped me. That was the biggest benefit to me because there were other things I had going for me, a lot of things going for me, in fact, but that was the missing piece for me, you know? Okay. Yeah, something for sure when you're doing on your own, you have this new resolution effect, you know? You start, you're like very motivated, man, after three weeks, it just fades. And I, I figured, no, you need a community. You need to be somewhere where you are constantly learning and then, you know, improving, so. And, and and Mick, like you don't have to join my community, join a dojo and get into combat sports. There's a lot of really good guys that do that. Join, I mean, if you like guns, then join a gun club. And, you know, there's a lot of very successful guys that like, like to shoot guns and hunt, right? I mean, just figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. The invitation's there. It's behind a paywall. You know, watch okay. the video when you land on the page. It tells you exactly how it works and see if it's a good fit. Okay. Uh, last right. question before I, I, I wrap up. How do you avoid um, being distracted by, because I haven't seen like very successful men uh, like Jeff, those, those, those millionaire, billionaire who are single or, you know, still spinning plate. They usually have mm -hmm. a woman with them. So how do you, you know, stop? I, I'm single. So I, I, I find that going, trying to chase excellence and um of course i want to have a woman you know it's a little mm -hmm. distracting so how yeah so i mean you're asking like how are all these billionaires you know like with these women like how does that work for them sort of thing yeah, i can tell you because they suck with women yeah i can <laughs> tell you right now i mean like if you take a look at the richest people in the world you got uh jeff bezos who's a fucking idiot you know he left his uh you know he basically screwed up his marriage by banging some home wrecker you know essentially um Bill uh, Gates, <laughs> he doesn't wear the pants in that relationship. She does. <laughs> he's, he's still yeah. a fucking beta idiot. Smart as hell. I mean, he made a ton of money and he created one of the biggest companies in the world. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to say, oh, you know, I'd love to have Bill Gates' marriage, or I wouldn't, you know, or I'd want to have Jeff Bezos' life, or I'd want to be like Elon Musk. Have you seen his fucking third wife or fourth wife or whatever she is? Yeah, it looks like she fell out of a goth club drunk. Jesus, Bus, man. <laughs> Elon Musk, he's an alpha. He's he's really an alpha. He, no, no, he's a successful businessman. Okay. He is not he is not a red pill alpha. Well, not with women though. So you gotta understand, dude. Like I, I gotta do a I gotta do I'm doing a video on this probably next week here because I've had a couple of blue check marks and some people who are very high level guys with going, holy crap, dude, I need some help here. Um recently become my clients and um there, here's the trap. Their SMV gets to be so high with women and their opportunity gets to be so much that they think that that mat, that they, they think that they have a level of skill, but they don't see the quality of your relationships with women in your life is a function of your SMV, your skill with women, which is your game. And then your opportunity so some of these celebrities and high, you know, high earners like your Elon Musk's a, a G dude, of course he's a boss, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have the skill with women, with vetting, with selection. And I I'll bet with maintain, maintaining, cause these are things you have to actually work on. Musk but has been married to the same chick twice. He's been divorced three times and now he's got a chick with a, not a chick. He's got a kid with this chick. 
who, yeah, who freaked yeah. out on him because he said take the red pill on 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 Twitter. Not only did she freak out him, but her mommy freaked out on him as well. Elon, if you're watching, <laughs> we would we would be on Mars. You book me for coaching. I'll fucking sort out your life, buddy. I'm telling you right now, we will we will get people off Earth and to Mars once I get you focused on your purpose and away from making stupid choices of the women. Okay. All right. Thank right. you guys. I appreciate it. you guys are doing a really good job out there. Um, so just I I wish I had known about this ten years ago. Damn. You, you got it, brother. Take care. All man. right. Thanks, bro. All right, uh, let's rip through these because I'm starting to get tired. Here, we, just, we, just, we just invited Elon Musk on. I think he's coming next week. I'm, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Elon Elon is my ideal customer. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, well, he's my ideal customer too. Come on, I will. We'll I will. Time. I will straighten his ass out very quickly. All right, Ryan, uh, I'm gonna pull you in here. You have a question or a share for us? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, first off, congratulations on the 100th episode. Thanks, man. It's always good to see your content. Um, I did have one quick question as far as when you're chasing excellence, what do you do to avoid reverting back to blue pill mentality or blue pill habits? It's a constant tr you know, struggle. I mean, I, I struggle with it. You know, I still have to check myself from time to time. So don't think that just because you read a couple of books or you watched a few videos, I've put out a thousand videos by now, you know, to be honest with you. And I still have to check myself. So, oh yeah. Every once in a while, like if I need to, you know, a refresher, like what you're getting into, like watch mm -hmm. Rich's video again, like to remind yourself what you'll get into. If you know, if you make yep. these decisions, um, I feel like it's still, so, a pro it's still progress and work. Like I know, you know, the red pill and success doesn't just happen overnight. I mean, you have to do the work as you say. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. success Sorry, Rich. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So success with this stuff too, you have to change the way that your unconscious mind and your emotions and things are processing and, and you have to change your behaviors or habituation. So in other words, you can read it and Roll will even say it. Okay, read the rest, read my book. 12 times, but you have to go out and apply it, right? Mm. And do the action. Practice. And so in the practice, and some of that involves this middle step too, which is what's going on in your hind brain and your unconscious mind, understanding some of those primal drivers. When you have things happen to you, sometimes trauma damage, uh, breakups, um, bad examples when you're a kid, right? Stuff like that. It can leave some scarring and that sort of sits in your brain and, sig and signals danger, you know, when certain things crop up and then you fall into these blue pill, what we call blue pill behaviors. That's where some of the mental conditioning I focus can be like where I'm putting dudes into hypnotherapy or EMDR or mm -hmm. when we have a behavioral plan and certain meditation plans, but even like binge watching a video or having a motivational video you watch several times, what are you actually trying to do? You're trying to embody this thing and, and and hammer it into your unconscious right so you don't right. slip backwards and so those are those are okay too you know but i mean some sometimes just like with sports psychology and performance psychology we can hammer this stuff in different ways and recondition behavior and internal um emotional reactions too so that you don't slip backwards it's just a a, a thought S professional sports players do it all the time we we did it in the special operations community as well so well, yeah, I mean, no, there's no perfect blueprint. It's just a general guideline as to far as, you know, whenever you watch videos, I mean, you know, if you're just, you know, going with the flow, it's not really going to help you. I mean, I get that aspect of it. Um, I still feel like I'm progressing. I mean, I finally bought me a new car. Um, we're in the process of buying a house. I got me a 2021 Dodge Challenger. Six. Yeah, I mean, I've, first car I've ever bought that I was actually proud of, but... Yeah, mostly nice just want to kind of yeah, just want to kind of get some refreshers. You know, sometimes it can be difficult whenever you know you're navigating through life. You know, I, I'll I'll say this. You know, I I went through Rolo's first book. I don't know, 2017, whenever it was, and I was like, wow, wow, that that makes sense. I've probably listened to it. I mean, I didn't read it. I listened to Sam Bada narrate it, but I probably listened to it about <laughs> yep. five or six times now. Well, yeah, like, I mean, don't just don't just read something or listen to it once, like refresh yourself on it on a frequent basis. Uh, even, um, you know, like even though I, I, I chopped up Darren Hardy's bullshit, uh, you know, free series on how to be a better man, which is basically making a, a better beta. I listened to his compound effect audio series, probably oh, at least wonderful. Book. One of my favorites. Yeah. Compound effect. Yeah. yeah. So just so just make sure that you 
you know, can, like you can't build a strong body by working out once and then stopping, right? Yeah, like it's absolutely. Yeah. You know, like you're like you're at the gym three, four, five times a week. You know, doing your workout, doing your routine. You're going to the dojo. You're throwing. You know, you're striking exercises, whether you're rolling or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, you have to keep doing it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds good on paper to just do it once and have them, you know, master all of it, but it's just not going to happen. I mean, like exactly. you said, do do the work. Um, yeah, I mean, even watching, cause like I remember prior to being red pilled, I would always have cases of one itis and like, you know, looking back on it in retrospect, you had want to kick myself in the ass, like, you know, looking back on that, like right. before becoming red pilled, but yeah, I appreciate you all's time. And um, like I said, I'm glad to keep watching your content. And, you know, congratulations on your 100th episode. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. All See right, have a good night. Uh, let's get the super here. Lee says, killing the beta is not like killing a stormtrooper. <laughs> it's more akin to killing Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers. That MFR keeps coming back. <laughs> You're dealing with hardwired social conditioning. It takes time, fellas. Yeah, there's no lie there. Um, Let's see what we got left here. I haven't hit on yet. I got Vic. Vic, are you still there? Yeah, okay. Uh, Vic's there. Uh, What's shaking, uh, man? Yeah. Nothing much, man. How about yourself? Yeah, you know, just wrapping up 100 episodes, man. Yeah, congratulations, man. Thank I'm, you. Uh, I, I actually watch your content on and off, so that's why I say I'm kind of new. I just, uh, um, you know, so I I just, I just uh, really like your content, man. It's, Thanks, it's man. pretty cool. Is it just a thank you, or did you have a question tonight, too? Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of like advice. It's like, um, I guess, with my relationship, because it's like, uh, like, I've been with my girl for, like, about three, four years now, and, I mean, she's just different, man. Like, like she, she doesn't, like, she doesn't want to have sex with me as much, She it, <clears> and it's like, she's not respected me as much. Uh-oh. And I'm not, and I'm not understanding why. I'll tell you why yeah. the clock's ticking down at the end of the relationship, man. You lost frame exactly. So was, yeah, you gotta, was she like that at the beginning? Like, did she enthusiastically want to bang you? Did she respect you at the beginning, or? Yeah, like the first two, years, like sex wise, the first year was great, and then respect wise, uh, the first two years was great, and then like after those two years, like both of those just like it went, it's downhill. Are like, you living with her? Yeah, like I'm living with her now. Like Did right that now, that change kind of, when you started to live with her? No, it it, it changed like right in the middle of us living together. Okay, uh, so after you started living together for a bit, yeah, how yeah, how I, how uh, long after was it? Six months later, three months later, a year later? It was about about seven eight months later. Like yeah, things started. Yeah, that's to pretty. That's pretty years. typical. So yeah, yeah. So one, you lost frame, and two, you screwed up by moving in with her. When you move in with a chick, the competition anxiety drops, and you're going to have to work harder to maintain frame in that relationship. Paul, so if you're talk frame, to him. Yes, talk to him quick. Go ahead, real quick. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's the th three things you need to do to get frame back. This is also the things you need to do throughout the entire relationship. Is one is you need to start working on your SMV and doing so out of the relationship. Number two is you start working on your hobbies and your um, things that you're doing um, outside of the relationship. So you want to pick up a hobby and do something outside of the home that takes you away from the relationship. Understand? Yep. Now, number, num number three is, um, but there's something also in, in this too, um, as far as your SMV, part of that means your uh, game skills, but also setting boundaries and standards for things like disrespect. All right. And then number three, though, is uh, you're going to want to work on your seduction skills. All right. So something is lacking in your seduction skills and you need to up those skills. And some of that is passing the shit tests, too, and handling the things like where she's not wanting to be sexually active with you and some of those things, how to handle those things. And that's as brief. I mean, we're, we're getting to the end of the show, so that's about as much as I can give you right now. I'm not trying to grift my crap on Rich's channel, but I do have something for free in my email list. I just I have to say it because it's there do it. where I go over those three things. So go to apexmindset.net and get on my email list. All right. Okay. And I don't I've only sent out one thing, so I'll give you an idea how much spam I sent out, which is like none of it. We get on that thing, you'll get that free report I did. I, have I think a I probably report. email more than you do. You do way more than <laughs> I do. Like once every 60 days <laughs> if I'm lucky. I've, I got one in the last like five months, but <laughs> get that free report because it outlines how to do this in detail. But then there's more because there's a, a part two that I just need to get out. But until I hired help last week and 
I started hiring people to do things. They didn't have time. So it'll come soon. But uh, that'll help you out because you got to get framed back in the relationship, man. That's what it is. Well, or get rid of the relationship. Let, let, let's let's um let's do an episode together, Paul, on getting frame back. Maybe I'll get yeah. you and Ryan on because Ryan's good with that too. Ryan's really good with that. Yeah, it'd be sweet. It'd be yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah. you know, keep an eye open for that in the future because I know I haven't covered that yet. And hey, you know, I've done a hard hundred episodes, so let's do hundred more. Why not? You know, we'll find lots of other stuff to cover. Cool, Vic. Okay. Uh, is it is it okay if I ask one more question or good, yeah. Quickly, go ahead. Yeah, so, so yeah, so like, what do what do you do when 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 she shuts down? Because I, I try to do that. I try to affirm myself with her. Like I, I, I it's like I haven't given her ultimatums, but it's like I, I told remove her. Remove like, your look, attention and time. A what? Remove your attention and time. Attraction and desire and arousal happens from when you're not actually there. Also, yeah. Stop, stop, stop trying so hard to bang your girlfriend, which sounds hilarious as hell. But like, <laughs> like find a pursuit that you've that you've either abandoned or maybe you want to take up that you haven't had a chance yet um and just double down on that and just start start to fucking ignore more and do more of your own stuff <laughs> i say right now his head is like this woof, like i can say like, what that doesn't make any sense what are you talking yeah, well, about guys well, yeah no 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 it actually does make sense like so like we had a conversation yeah. like just real quick like we had a conversation yeah. with each other it was like I, I don't know what your problem is. And then she made a comment was like, oh, well, like, I I, I know you work, because I work like 16-hour days, but then she made a comment was like, well, like, I, you know, I'm just bored with you. Like, I don't see, like, you, you're all, you're, like, when I see you, you know, you're always just sitting down, just laying down, just relaxing, and, you know, I'm just not into that. I'm like, well, like, what does that mean? <laughs> women, yeah, so women, that's the women are, skills I'm talking yeah, about. Too. Women are, yeah. are, are need to look up to you. Women are into men that look like they're chasing excellence. So if she doesn't see you for 16 hours and then when she sees you, you're like fucking tired and you're like, Oh shit, that was a long day. And you put your hand down your pants and the, you know, the TV goes on the sports channel. You don't look like a guy that's chasing excellence. Right. Um, yeah. Ryan, Ryan stone puts it this way. It's fuck me or fuck you. Right. And if and if she's not into you, then you start doing things that you're into. That might be, again, going to the gym, going to the dojo, joining an archery class, whatever the hell it is. But you start doing things that you enjoy that yeah, will lead that towards, you know, formula, the arousal. Right? It's 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 yeah. tough to rekindle, you know, um, a relationship where you've lost frame. It's not that you can't, but you have to be OK with leaving that relationship if it doesn't rekindle yeah so you yeah. ignore her when she behaves that way you do something else but then what you do is you you have those nights where you're like hey i got something planned tonight uh wear that dress i like the shoes and um we're gonna go do something well what yeah. is it it's a surprise let's go and then yeah. you work you, you tell her what to do yeah. and you work on seduction right then you have a killer amazing cool ass night right and, and you treat her like it's a date like you're dating her okay like you're going for that girl you've never had sex with. And you're going to try to have sex with her kind of a thing. Create that variety and then put her ass to bed and her again because you got you got golf tomorrow. Whatever your hobby is, is you decide to pick up. You get what I'm saying? And so you got to push pull a little bit. It's too static. And when it's too static, there's not enough variety. The arousal goes down. Um, she also said, I need to have a little bit of dread that this could end or might leave you. You know, this this situation she's in might be might go away. Not that I'm not saying create a toxic environment, but she needs to appreciate what she has right now. She doesn't, and that there's not yeah. enough dread in this relationship. So there's more to it, man. But obviously, like I said, it, you got some avenues to start building and learning about that stuff now. At yeah, because get that started. And I appreciate you guys because I I know I got a lot of work to do. I just I just feel like I like I put a lot of work in, and I just feel like she doesn't appreciate it. But stop no, stop putting all, stop putting all that work in. Start. Put it yeah. on. Put the work on you. Yep. Take yeah. Women love you for who energy. you are, not what you do. Take take Women. that energy and resources that you're trying to put in to get in her to bang you, and put it back into yourself. And if yeah. she wants to start banging you because she sees you as that higher value guy again, as her best choice, as her apex alpha, whatever that looks yeah. like, then that's fine. But um, we're gonna wrap it up because we could keep talking about this forever, and I'm getting super yeah, tired. Yeah. And I want to you know save this for like a dedicated show. So. In the future, in the next couple of weeks, I'll get Paul and hopefully Ryan on together and we'll do a, a full, you know, before the train wreck on getting the frame back. Okay. I uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks, support. Vic. See you, man.
All right, guys. Um, with that being said, we're going to start to wind this bad boy down. It's uh, It's been a slice, 100 episodes. Uh, smash a like, leave a comment below. All that stuff helps. Got to go real quick, full screen. Shout out to the channel sponsor, my boy, Scott, over at Grand... Where's my button here? There it is. Grandex Soap, Tactical Soap. Go to coopersoap.com. They have pheromone few soaps, uh, pheromone sticks, beard oils. They got the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, grab some of it. You guys are showering anyway. You might as well grab some stuff that supports the creation of content that helps you guys not make train wrecks out of your damn lives. Um, Paul, brother, thanks for hopping on and uh, Good time, chopping bro. it up a little bit. Awesome. And, Had to um, for the hundredth. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. We'll hopefully, you know, do do the two hundred show together. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah. Guys, thanks for watching, man. Appreciate you. Much love. Thumbs up on that bad boy. And we'll see you guys next Monday. The show's going to continue. Got lots more recorded stuff I got to put out. So we'll catch up with you guys later. Peace out. Peace out.